This meeting is called to order the public hearing, Bonner County Zoning Commission. The time is 5.30 and the date is October 20th, 2022. Location is the third floor conference room in the Bonner County Administration Building on Highway 2 in Sanford, Idaho. Meeting is being recorded and streamed, via, streamed live via Zoom and YouTube. Let's stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have a roll call from my left, please. Bob uh, Clark. Commissioner Webster. Commissioner Lynn Scott. Commissioner Wakely. And Commissioner Marble. We have five of five commissioners present tonight. That is a four. Is there anyone in attendance in need of special assistance to see, hear, or participate in these hearings? Anyone that can't hear me, do I need to speak louder for anyone? Okay, I can speak louder. Commissioners and staff members, are there any changes to the agenda? Uh, in that case, we no changes in the agenda will proceed. Approval of minutes. The minutes from our last meeting held on September 15th, 2022 were made available for the commission to review. Does any commissioner or staff member care to correct those minutes? Minutes are approved under the consent agenda. <clears throat> So for those of you who may not be familiar with these public hearings, I'll introduce the process now. The zoning commissioners are myself and the four gentlemen to my left. We are volunteers. We serve on the commission because we live in Bonner County, we work in Bonner County, we have friends and family here and we love Bonner County. Our job is to be as objective as we review, our job is to be objective as we review applications having to do with zoning and land use. We are not employees of the county, we are not politically elected, and we are not paid for this service. We do our best with support from the professionals in the Bonner County Planning Department and other county and state departments to review these applications. The Zoning Commission is a quasi-judicial body, meaning that we don't make the rules, we just follow the rules, and that's what we're looking for tonight. This is in contrast to the Planning Commission, which is quasi-legislative, meaning that they make many of the rules that we follow here in this commission. Uh, people at the, let's see, so Daniel over here at the rostrum and Director Gabell are members of staff. We call them staff members. Uh, they work as employees of the County Planning Department. Staff members are subject matter experts in the area of zoning, planning, permitting, and they spend countless hours helping professionals and DI wires properly plan projects affecting land use. They act as filters, ensuring that what comes before this body is well prepared. Indeed, there are many applications and requests that never make it to these public hearings because the proposals are simply incompatible with county code. And then the public are also here tonight. The commission solicits public testimony that helps the commission to learn about facts relevant to these files, facts that may not have been known to the applicant, their representative of the planning department staff, we accept public testimony in written form before these hearings, and we love written testimony because we have time to re review it, reflect on it before the hearing. Um, now tonight we have only one file to review. It's an application for zone change. The procedure for a hearing is the following. Staff will present staff report from the rostrum here on the right. The applicant or the representative will present an overview of the project, again, from the same rostrum. Commission might choose to ask questions of staff and the applicant normally at the end of their presentation. Then the commission opens up uh, for opens the hearing for public testimony. And I'll explain the rules for public testimony when we get there. The applicant and staff will have an opportunity to rebut any new information presented in public testimony. And finally, the commission will close public testimony, deliberate, and hopefully vote. So our first file tonight is. DC 12-22, zone change in James Hammond. The applicants are requesting a zone change from row five 
the Rural Service Center on 11.8 acres. The property is zoned Rural 5. The project is located off Dufort Road and Bay Road in Section 1, Township 55 North, Range 4 West, Boise, Meridian. Does any commissioner have conflict of interest or ex parte communication to disclose at this time? Nope. Um, the Whiskey Rock consultant has done some work in my family in the past. Okay. And they're representing this file tonight. They're representing. Okay. Any financial conflict of interest? Okay. In that case, let's take the reins. Thank you, Commissioner. Good evening, members of the public, commissioners. Good evening. Daniel Britt, planning staff for the record. We're here to discuss a zone change from Rule 5 to Rural Service Center in hopes to reach a recommendation this evening. So Butter County Revised Code 12216 uh, requires staff and the governing bodies shall review the particular facts and circumstances of each proposal submitted and shall determine whether there's adequate evidence that the proposal is in accordance with the general and the specific objectives of the comprehensive plan. Bonner County Revised Code 12-320.1. The purpose statement of each zone and map designation set forth in the following sections shall be used to guide the application of the zones, the designation, and all the lands in unincorporated Bonner County. So currently the parcel that's highlighted there in yellow is, what we're, is the parcel we're discussing this evening. It is within the rural district. And the rural district envisions um, limited residential densities and permitted uses that those are compatible with rural character and nearby resource production districts and sites that can be adequately supported by rural service levels. Two, according to the small scale farming and forestry activities and tourism and recreation uses that can be supported by rural service levels and are compatible with rural character. Three, encouraging conservation developments, configurations to create permanent open space or farming areas, protect sensitive environmental features, reduce infrastructure costs, and or enhance recreational opportunities. Rural Service Center is where the applicant wants to go this evening. <clears throat> Envisions uh, the district to establish, to promote development of local commercial services in small communities to meet the needs of rural residential residents, as well as limited tourism, commercial services, and limited light industrial uses, consistent with the maintenance of the rural character of the area. The rural Service Center District is also intended to provide opportunities for a variety of affordable housing types that are within walking distance of commercial services. So these are the standards for which this file was reviewed. Um, the Rule 5 standard, which this property R is at, is either developed at or near one dwelling per five acres, and it's already been determined that it doesn't have to meet the criteria for R10, since it currently is zoned Rule 5. The criteria to meet the Rural Service Center, the land's got to be able to provide for uh, a range of small-scale retail and rural service uses, allowing for mixed-use buildings, allowing for light industrial uses. It's the Rural Service Center excludes commercial uses with extensive outdoor storage, excludes large scale commercial uses, and enhances pedestrian access and improve the character of the area. So project summary, the applicant is requesting a zone change from Rural 5 to Rural Service Center for the purposes of building a gas station. The request was evaluated against the standards for the R5 and the Rural Service Center. The parcel is currently comprehend Comprehensive Plan Rural Residential. Background on this parcel, it is 11.5 acres, or sorry, 11.8 acres. It is zoned Rural 5, and the land use designation for this is Rural Residential, and it is on platted parcel. Parcel is accessed on the corner of Dufer Road and Bay Road, both which are county owned and maintain 60 foot paved right of ways. These are the environmental features in and around this parcel. Um, however, we look at the parcel for environmental features specifically. This one does not contain any map slopes over 15%, does not contain any map wetlands, does not contain any water waterfront or streams, and is within special flood hazard X zone X. Um, possible services on this parcel could be an individual well and septic. 
uh, fire is already afforded through, afforded through Selkirk Fire District, Power Northern Lights, and is within Lake Ponderay School District number 83. These are the following agencies that were routed for comment on this project out of Department of Water Resources, Bonner County Road and Bridge, and DEQ all submitted written comments that you can find in your folders this evening. Um, no comments were submitted from Idaho Fish and Game, Idaho Transportation Department, Selkirk Fire District, and the rest of the agencies did not reply. So public, public comments received in opposition to this project. Um, the concerns were increased traffic, noise, safety, crime, fuel spills, water supply. They don't want the convenience of a gas station retail establishment in the area um, should be located elsewhere in the area. Comments did come in in support of the project. Um, they like that the convenience of having a gas station retail business nearby serves the needs of the growing population in the area, will provide more options that, than the existing business in the area, and it fills a void that exists for convenience services. So back to the standards that mentioned earlier, um, we already know this parcel is zoned R5, so it meets that designation. Is the land capable of providing a wide range of small scale uh, retail and rural services? It is, allowing for mixed use buildings, it does. Allowing for light um, industrial uses, it can, and that's the purpose of the Rural Service Center is to eliminate those larger ones. It excludes commercial uses with extensive outdoor storage, excluding small uh, scale or large scale commercial uses. Um, the gas station as proposed does not fit into that per code. Um, enhances pedestrian access to improve the characters of the area. It can, so long as they're following the standards set forth in BCRC 12452. Findings of fact have not changed since the time the staff report was prepared, nor have the conclusions of law. Staff has found that this proposal is consistent with Bonner County Revised Code. I think it's noteworthy that um, the county is working currently to update the comprehensive plan, um, taking a look at the Priest River Old Town sub area plan that was submitted um, to our department. I read through that this afternoon and found that this quote of how the people that sat on that panel or the people that were involved with it um, envisioned that the community also recognizes and supports the need for some neighborhood commercial light industrial operations that do not require the extension of urban like services into the boundaries of Priest River Old Town sub area, such as allowing for continued operations of small business like the Bay Market. This is not an adopted map. This is not an adopted plan, just so we're clear this evening on that. This is, however, um, a screenshot of the entire area, how they envision Old Town and Priest River to be the sub area committee. Um, to the top right here, this is the parcel in question is listed as neighborhood. Down here, this is the map that was produced uh, the end of March of 2021. And that sub area co um, component was submitted to Bonner County uh, uh, that same week, I believe. Um, so they envisioned these type of uses forthcoming. That includes my presentation, commissioners. I can take any questions. Questions you have at this time? Uh, applicant for representative here tonight. Did you want to enlarge the PDF? Yes.
There we go. Thanks, Daniel. Good evening, um, Zoning Commission. Thanks for your time tonight. Thanks for having me. My name is Jeremy Grimm, owner of Whiskey Rock uh, Planning and Consulting. I'm a professional land use planner working in Bonner County for more than 15 years. Um, tonight, I'm representing Mr. and Mrs. Hammond uh, on this zone change request. Um, file ZC001222 from Rural 5 to Rural Service Center. Um, as staff mentioned, 11.79 uh, acre parcel, zone rural five, vacant. Um, of particular note, the parcel has about 800 feet of frontage along Dufert and 765 feet of frontage along Bay Road. It is provided with public services, including Selkirk Fire. Um, the, the purpose of, of this zone change is um, really to provide opportunities for some services for area residents and tourists uh, in the area. Um, currently, if you were to be there in this vicinity at Willow Bay or in the uh, greater vicinity, it's about 12 miles to get to um, services or gas station um, over by uh, Kokolala. And then likewise, it's about nine miles to get to the nearest gas station uh, over in Priest River. Um, you know, in the summer, maybe 20 minutes, in the winter, certainly a lot longer. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting about this area when I started working on this file is that there are over 17 subdivisions and hundreds of homes within 1.5 miles of this site. So whether planned or just by, you know, incremental growth, the area certainly um, has intensified and developed over the last uh, few decades. Um, when you're looking at uh, the parcel, this is looking uh, north on Bay Road as you're coming up to that intersection. You can see the parcels on the left here. Uh, it's pretty unremarkable, pretty typical of the area. Um, this is, uh, if you haven't been there, this is that intersection of Bay and Dufert. And uh, I think it's worth pointing out here is that um, this isn't so much like pulling out onto a, a main highway somewhere where um, there's potential for traffic conflict. Uh, traffic is slowing at this intersection or coming to a stop already. Um, this is on Dufert looking sort of southeast. Um, so the northern portion of this property along Dufert. Again, um, some minor uh, revegetation and growth. And this is on the other side, looking north um, across Dufert at uh, the crossings and uh, per the Willow Bay Marina and RV resort, um, the marina and restaurant, bar, RV and campground is located in a tourist area mixed with the rural lifestyle. So that's sort of what um, my clients are trying to uh, support and build upon here. Um, they, um, Mr. Ammons, born in the area, raised in the area, and um, has a home in this area and wants to uh, um, provide additional services uh, in this area that seem to be of need. So uh, this is the zoning map as staff brought forward. You can see the subject parcel is abutting the uh, recreation zone. And I, as I started looking through the county zoning, um, it's pretty interesting these rural service centers are um, around, pop up around almost every recreation zone. And I believe that was the intent of uh, the, the, the folks who built this code is to provide these services near recreational opportunities. Um, this is uh, Upper Priest Lake. You can see uh, there's a resort uh, recreation area here um, with a rural service area to the west. Um, this is Upper Priest Lake as well. You've got that recreation designation and the purple is the uh, rural service center. So again, they're kind of co-located. Um, certainly Lower Priest Lake has lots of rural service centers uh, adjacent to abutting uh, the recreation zone, uh, both um, the west there in Priest Lake or down by Coolin. And uh, down by Blanchard, again, we see it. 
um, by the golf course, recreation zoning, rural service center. And even over in Clark Fork, there's some rural service center, Annie's Orchard, some other things there. So what I found is I was going through all the, the zoning in the, in the county is this is a very typical and customary co-location of a resort, uh, um, a rural service center next to a recreation zoning. And it makes sense because it's meant to provide those services that uh, the recreation areas need. So when we look at that rural district, as staff mentioned, um, it talks about being uh, these uses being compatible with the rural pursuits, small scale farming, forestry and tourism and recreational uses that are compatible, compatible with the rural character. When we look at that rural service center district, you know, it, it highlights to meet the needs of rural residents as well as limited tourist commercial services. Um, small scale retail, rural services, and it excludes that larger commercial uh, use and those larger commercial uses. And, you know, it, it should be pretty clear, um, Mr. and Mrs. Hammond aren't asking for a full commercial. This is that very restrictive rural service center. Uh, in, in some of the comments, there was concerned about what could happen on this site. This is, you know, early in the process, you know, there's a bunch of steps that um, the Hammonds will have to go through to bring this to reality. Um, you know, it starts with the zone change, then it would go through maybe a conditional use permit. Um, most of the uses in the rural service uh, center do require a conditional use permit. So there are further opportunities for public comment or restrictions to be placed on those uses. Um, but this is sort of the illustrated site plan, um, potentially a private road coming in and out with uh, that northeast corner, locating a gas station or service station there, and then some residents, the Hammonds wanna give their children each a lot so they can live near them. Um, and and the, the idea of a service station, it's, it's pretty compatible um, from my perspective. Um, you know, you see these uh, throughout the county. Often there are gathering places for neighbors to meet, uh, neighbors to discuss crime. In fact, um, rather than seeing someone on the road, you might be getting a cup of coffee and saying, hey, did you see that stranger down the road? Or this happened to my property. Or maybe there's a pinup board for a knitting club or a quilting club or um, a Bible study, um, whatever it may be, these, these rural stores, um, convenience stores um, can often be actual nodes and um, centers of, of rural communities. Um, yeah. This whisper in the front row has got to stop. I'll ask you later. Yeah. Um, so I just want to point out that, you know, um, although people often have fears of the worst, um, the Hammond's intention here is to add to this community that they're a part of, and uh, they see this as a need that's uh, compatible and that will fit in. Um, and again, uh, this is the first step in a long process for them. Um, but beyond that, um, this is sort of what the illustration looks like for now of, of what they hope to do there no plans for you know, anything too wild or crazy. So uh, the concluding remarks, um, you know, the subject property does sit adjacent, adjacent to a large recreation zoned area and facility. Um, the zone change, it won't induce traffic. I think that's a good point that uh, the county engineer brought up. Uh, a lot of the trips um, coming and going to this uh, future store would be uh, bypass trips or you're capturing bypass trips, or even uh, in some cases, you're gonna actually reduce traffic because people won't have to drive all the way to Priest or out to 95 to get, get some of these services. Um, it is served by appropriate public services. Um, many area, residents in the area do support this request. And then you look at the characteristic of this corridor and the vicinity of the, uh, the parcel to that uh, recreation zone um, parcel to the north. And uh, it does seem to suggest that it would support rural service designation. Um, Mr. Hammond's here and I'd just like him to take a second just to introduce himself and answer any other questions if you don't have any for me at this time. Yeah, yeah, you do and say your name. Uh, 
Uh, hello. Yes, I'm Sean Hammond. Uh, my wife, Laura, over there. We are residents in the community. We are looking to, you know, basically just we've seen a need for it. Um, we know that, that the Willow Bay Marina has been recently purchased by a new owner, and he is currently uh, taking advantage of his active permit to add 50 more docks. You know, so he plans on doing some more things with the marina down there. Um, it's just something that we've seen a need for. There could be a multitude of uses. You know, there's propane services. People coming in and out of the RV park are needing propane. Um, a coffee shop, donuts, something simple. We want to keep it simple. The rural property or the residential surrounding the service center, like Jeremy had said, our plan was to give each one of our kids a, par a parcel. We have four kids. So there's five parcels there left over. They're probably going to take all five of them because one of them's already put an arena in there for their horses and it's kind of taken up more room than one acre. So um, that's kind of our goal. That's we're not here to do anything detrimental to the community. We we've just seen a need for it, and this is an excellent location. It fits, I mean, from what I understand. It meets all of the criteria. It fits within the design planning. And so therefore, I just leave it to you guys now. I mean, I know that there's going to be, no matter what, when there's change, there's going to be opposition as well as, you know, support. So I expect that from everybody. We welcome it, you know, um, and that's just kind of how it plays out. So that's where we... Where we are. Any questions, Commissioner? Yeah. I don't think for the applicant, maybe for the representative or staff, perhaps. Um, I didn't know if someone can pull up uh, 12, 3. What is the uh, table for residential? I think rural service center, your permissible and the and the conditional, those matrix. Oh, the matrix. Yeah, the use matrix. I just wanted to take a look at that. Are you doing that, Jacob? Or? Try to do it. I don't have it on the. I mean, um. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> what are you looking for specifically, Commissioner? Well, um, I think it was Mr. Brown made the comment that even if this was approved, it would still take a conditional use permit to put a gas station in. I believe that's what he said. Uh, not a gas station, but many of the many of the uses. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this particular use. Imagine. Yeah. Okay. The commercial use table has retail sales of food, gas, and sundry called two three three. From later years following no 26. So this is measure. This is where the limitation comes in on that square footage. So no 26 for that is food or retail sh uh, stores shall have a maximum floor area of 10,000 square feet or less. Commercial malls that feature more than one food or retail. Or shall have a maximum of 25,000 square feet. I think the mall is being talked about the mall. Yeah. Yeah. Mike's for online, it's not for this room. Got a couple of chairs over here. Are those open? Yep. Uh, there's one of mine. <laughs> one chair open over there. I'm going to claim that. The comment was that uh, commercial uses for gas are restricted to 10,000 square feet unless it's a, a mall, and then that would be go up to 25,000 square feet. The Hammonds are not proposing a mall. Okay. Any questions for uh, staff or the applicant at this time, Commissioner?
move to the uh, public testimony portion of the meeting. The rules of public testimony are the following. Speak into the microphone uh, here in the center, loud and clear so that we can all understand you and so that people at home and people listening through the microphone who are uh, our future selves and our children and our children's children can listen to us later. First thing you need to do when you get up there is state your name. And that we say state your name for the record and that's just make it easy to, to know later on or live through Zoom or YouTube who's speaking at the moment. Time limit is three minutes per testimony. Any public testimony may receive an extra three minutes and no more than any other person who has signed up to share public testimony for a total of no more than six minutes. <clears throat> Comments will be limited to the specifics of this file. If any public testimony agrees with a previously shared public testimony, please show your respect for everyone's time and simply state that you agree with that testimony. Personal or derogatory comments about another person or their position are not allowed. Clapping, cheering, or booing is not allowed. Remember that this hearing is being shared live via the internet and is being recorded for later viewing. Hey, Director Bell, would you pass me that uh, sign up sheet? I just want to say that these microphones are for recording purposes only. They don't amplify our voices. So speak clearly and loudly into the microphone. But hopefully, we can all hear you. Thank you. All right, the chair opens the hearing to public testimony. Before the hearing, their commissioners were provided with several written comments regarding this file. Are there any other written statements to be submitted before we move to? I don't think we got anything last minute, Jenna. Do we get any other written comments that we haven't received? Yeah. We haven't received any exhibits. If any member of the group here has any paperwork or exhibits you want to present to them, we need to retain a copy of it and stamp it into the record. If you can do it sooner than later rather than doing a public comment, I should have mentioned it earlier. Uh, is there any? Let's see. We'll start with. People who physically signed up, I know that's not everyone. And um, we'll start with folks who would like to speak in favor of the file. So, Mr. Larry Amundsen, did I get the name right? Yes. Okay. Come on up to the microphone and introduce yourself, and then uh, you can walk me here with your three minute timer. It won't be that long, believe me. No, I just want to, I'm in favor, I'm in support of uh, Mr. Hammond. I would like to have a convenience store nearby. I live about a half a mile away in the, in the community to the north. I had an incident last summer where uh, I had someone in my household have a bee sting. I went looking for an antihistamine, Benadryl. There's nothing around. It would have taken an hour, 45 minutes to an hour to get there and get back. But So it would have been nice to have something that was close by. Uh, and I believe in what Mr. Hammond will do with the property, will be upscale and classy. I believe in uh, his integrity. He wants to make a place for his family. And uh, I believe it will be good for the community. Thank you, sir. Do you have any other folks present who would like to share testimony in favor of this file, supporting the application for his own change? Okay. Is anyone here with a neutral position, neutral comment on this file? We've got um, Mr. Randy Benton, are you present? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't care one way or the other, but there are some concerns with the uh, the traffic in the area. I live just down the road from that off of Ben Morris Road, and I heard it said that it's going to lessen the traffic. I don't think it's going to lessen the traffic. There's already a problem with traffic on Dufort Road, and especially uh, getting on to 95. Um, it's not bad if you go into Priest River, but getting on to 95 is a uh, treacherous act some days. And so I guess do we have, what are the plans for that? And what are the plans for that intersection right there? That's, that's a pretty blind intersection on some snowy days. And so, and I don't understand the, the breaking up of the lot 
for the kids there, we all have to have five or 10 acres out there. So, and why is it such a big commercial area to make a commercial area? Why does it have to be that big? Those are my concerns. Anyone else with a neutral position on this file that would like to share testimony this time? Go to opposed. And the first name on my list is Rod Williams. Good evening. My name is Rod Williams. I'm here with my wife, Debbie Williams. Uh, we've been at our uh, place now for right about a year and a half. It took us about six months to find that place. Uh, we chose it because of the rural area itself. And uh, we're calling it our last place. It's the place that we wanted to be, the place we want to hand it down to our kids. And so um, I hope you guys can understand our disappointment with finding out that there's going to be a store and uh, you know, they call it facilities or whatever there for convenience, but we picked that place going, oh, this is perfect. We've got Sagal, it's plenty close. We got Priest River, it's perfect. And we couldn't see this place possibly changing. So anyway, we, uh, we actually are right there at the bottom of the uh, map right there. We are just one lot between uh, that. You can see the large building, um, that's ours. And, um, the traffic, like the gentleman said, is already, we, we've got that going, but in the evening, best thing is, is going out and not having any lights that you can see, anything like a gas station or any facilities like that, it's gonna illuminate that side. It's just gonna take away um, what we were hoping for that we would always have. So um, if I'd have known that this was gonna be coming up, um, I can tell you right now, I, I seriously doubt that we would have purchased that piece of property just for that reason. Um, that's about all I got to say. And, uh, does Mrs. Williams want to speak tonight? Sandy, anything that starts with an S. I'm Sandy Sparling. My husband and I live at 9671 Dufort Road, which is just kitty corner to the property we're talking about. We were running and driving into the road. So we know the area very well. Um, traffic certainly, yes, a concern. It's posted 45. Most of the time you see people flying by at 65. That is a sharp curve there that you have to get down to get down to Bay Road. Uh, my biggest concern is one of them already been mentioned, lights. Um, more traffic. I guess my first question would be, who are we trying to please here? The tourist? Or are we trying to help out the residents? If we can't help the residents, we move there to be really. We need what we have. If we're going to go by gas, we wait till we're going to go to Priest River or Seagull. And we purchase our gas. It's not that we walk out the door and we say, oh, we need gas. So that to me is really a concern. Um, I, I, I personally don't have a problem with going to Priest River and getting my gas. As far as the convenience market, we need is the very market. They do a fabulous job. They have an excellent restaurant. They have probably all the amenities that this would have, maybe more. And as far as going and having a cup of coffee, finding out what's going on in the they mark it as a new place. So we don't need another one of those. I see this as being something for people coming through. Recreational area, how does that work? There's, 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 there's gas on the water for the boats. So who are we helping with this recreation area? I don't understand that. So I think those are the main things, but most importantly, could we please listen to our residents that want to live really peacefully? We'll take the bumps of going into Priest River or wherever to get our gas. That's my commentary and I hope it's uh, being heard. Thank you. Roger Sparling. All right. 
Um, Merle Conley. Merle? Uh, I didn't plan on speaking tonight, but I'm speaking from my heart. The reason we moved here was for rural living. We lived in a place called Los Olivos, California, and it took us 10 miles to get to the local gas station there. We never thought anything of it. We have a perfectly wonderful Bay re um, market restaurant, as Sandy mentioned. It is literally around the corner from this proposed idea. It would remarkably affect our nighttime lights, affecting us everywhere. We live in Willow Bay. This is a we would never, ever have chosen to live there if we thought that we were going to live across the street from a gas station. You guys all know what Dufford is like. It's a beautiful, pristine, challenging country road. It's gorgeous. It's, it's completely on its own from 95 to Priest River. And as the fellow from Whiskey Rock mentioned, it's nine miles and 12 miles to the nearest gas station. How tough is that to play in here for? Nothing about you having a bunker or something for a problem. Play ahead. Maybe you have to play ahead for things like that. Well, it's not really right. Rock has that stuff all over the place at the home market. Look how solid that we need. If there was a, a, a gas leak, if you put some gas station, it, it could ruin the little bay watershed. I can't express to you how important this is to us. We friends who couldn't make it to them. And I'm very disappointed in those that feel that this would be an addition to a gorgeous, pristine country road. Thank you for listening. I'm too short for this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diana Bynum, and I have lived in this area for over 60 years. Sure, thanks. Um, I have been a part of our beautiful, wonderful community for ever. And um, in fact, this piece of property that these people bought, my, they bought from my brother. And when I had talked to um, Sean about it, he asked me if I could talk to my brother and I said I didn't think that would be good. My brother was pretty firm on his price. But I asked Sean what he was going to do with the property, and he told me that him and his wife were tired of living in a little travel trailer on his brother's property. They planned on moving on the property and building a home there. To be honest, if I'd have known that they were going to put a gas station in there, I would have called my brother and told him not to sell it to him. That's the honest truth. And these are my reasons. I have... I live right, I mean, like I said, we just owned it, that. We just sold it to them. But I, we have, our family has 89 acres right on the other side of homes. And so I have lived and watched the roads and the traffic. Every morning I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm a farmer, and I watch traffic. And even in the nighttime, the traffic has gotten so seriously bad. But during the day, oh, my goodness, so during the day, Used to be you could count a few trucks and trailers and you know logging trucks going by. Now it's a lot more. So that is my concern there. The lights is also my concern. The water is also my concern. The environment. What kind of people and situation would this bring in? Are we talking? I believe we're talking more tourists because, as most of us have said, we're a rural type people. We like it the way we are. I mean, it's it's my home and it's our home. And I certainly, I'm just against it for so many reasons. I hate to stand here for hours and tell you why. But my main reason is because we love our community the way it is. And we love the little bay store. We love the people in the community. We support the people in the community. And we love to support Sean and his wife. We're not, not, not welcoming them, but we're not welcoming the idea of what they're trying to do and changes. I think it would bring in more traffic. I just, I could go on. I'm totally opposed to it. And I just hope, like, 
like Sandy said, I hope you'll hear, hear our hearts on this because this is not what we want. We are farmers and rural people and, and hardworking, mostly middle class, maybe even poorer people. And so the type of, um, what, what will this do to our taxes? What will this do to us that are just struggling to keep it the way we are, to live the lives that we live for our generations? I'm talking for generations for my family. I'd like to continue the way it has. And I thank you for listening. Uh, R.J. Garwood. Good evening. Uh, I live, well, actually, my, my shop is uh, the green building in that corner. I'm sorry, R.J. Garwood. Knocked this thing over by accident. Um, I'm on Holmes Road directly west of this location. I'm kind of reiterating what everybody's already said, I'll keep it short and sweet. Um, we're all in wells. We have water contamination from a fuel cell leak. Who knows who, what happens? Uh, I don't think the county's gonna be trucking on water to us, right? We got a lot of people on wells. Uh, traffic is out of control. I'm on, the, on that property four or five days a week out there and I hear logging trucks coming down, Jake breaking, trying to make that turn turns covered in gravel about half the time and you hear people sliding around. Uh, winter time, there's always a couple in there buried in the snow banks because they don't negotiate that turn coming either east or west. So I need to see a car crash into a couple gas pumps sitting there. Don't need a gas station. Um, we're looking at building a house on that property adjacent to that shop and gas stations there, we're not. So uh, that's kind of important to us. We love it. Garwood. I'm Jennifer Garwood. Our property does, in fact, butt up directly against this proposed change of um, designation. And I have a lot of the same concerns that have already been echoed, so I won't repeat them. But I do want to point out that I personally think with the amount of traffic and putting in a gas station on that corner, you're ultimately going to need a uh, roundabout, a stoplight, before we stop or something because people do travel at high rates of speed. They do go faster than the speed limit. And you're gonna, I think, have a lot of crashes in that area if we're gonna put commercial on that particular corner. Um, I do think it changes the entire character of where we are all choosing to live. And um, it makes it not rural, which is something that's been important as everyone said, why they purchased there, why they have chosen to live there. So um, I would ask that this commission decline their request to change the zoning. Thank you. Uh, you know, we've been asked a couple times to, to deny this. The only thing we're going to be doing is making a recommendation. We're not approving this. We're only making a recommendation to approve our recommendation to deny it to the county commissioners. We are approving this. this is what the county commissioners. <clears throat> Eric Miller. Hello, Eric Miller. Uh, yeah, I'm lot number two on Holmes Road right there. And uh, yeah, same with everyone else here. I bought it because it was away from all these amenities. And uh, yeah, the, the increased traffic, the loitering that often happens at gas stations. Uh, and uh, it's, again, nice and quiet, and Vase Store does a pretty good job for our little neighborhood there. So that's all. I oppose it. Thank you. Uh, Diane Fuller. You don't have to. No, that's fine. I do have a question. So, right. Go ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Watch your timer. Please. All right, Diane Fuller. I just have a question reiterating um are we doing this for the residents or the tourists um it was mentioned that 50 additional slips are going in uh this is questionable um we're in litigation right now as to who owns the property where the slips are going in so um that i don't know if it's factual or not we'll find out to be determined um so how much tourists are gonna need a gas station there I don't know. 
And I just, same thing, we bought for the rural life, nine miles, 12 miles. That's nothing compared to driving down the road and having lights and a commercial business. That's my opinion. Thank you. Fern Graham. Good evening, Vern Graham. And uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, live in this area and uh, be a taxpayer in the county for 20 years now, live off of Moose Meadow Drive. And uh, the comments that people have made with regards to Dufert Road, and I think back on 20 years ago, I could come basically from Highway 95 to my turn on Moose Meadow and probably pass five or six, seven cars at any time of day. If you want to drive down the Spirit Lake cutoff road today at five o'clock in the morning, I'll guarantee you'll pass 50 cars between Dufert Road and Highway 41. And to the, to the convenience aspect of it, I think everybody in the room here has, has stated to the fact that nine miles or 12 miles or, and you forgot to mention, you can go to Spirit Lake in 13 miles, I think. Um, all the amenities that we need are available to us there. And at the same time, you end up where you need, if you need medication, you got a pharmacy that's located somewhere else. So you, you, you do some pre-planning uh, to get, get the things that you do need. And as far as gas, um, I've heard everybody makes the same comment. If I'm gonna go to town, I'll get my gas, I'll get my groceries, I'll go to the dump, I'll get my medication. I'll take care of those, those things. And if I don't, Eric at the Vey Cafe, he'll have what we need with regards to those, those things. Um, I think the other question, two points I want to make with regards to it, is first of all, the comment with regards to who are we doing it for? Um, I think that you're hearing tonight that the, the people that live there live there for a reason. They live there for the ruralness. And to have something change, change is inevitable. Status quo is never forever. But the amenities that we need, we're not, never gonna get everything we want in one location. If we think that we need amenities, put a dump site there. Because that's what we need. We don't have the dump site. We have to drive, we have to drive further to go to a dump site than we do to get gas. So the, the last point with regards to it, and I think it's the most important was the environmental aspect. Every one of us in this room get our water from the Spokane aquifer. If that aquifer gets contaminated, we're all in, in dire straits. So I did take almost three minutes. So I'm opposed to it. <clears throat> Those are the names that I've uh, that were written on the on the sheet, and there's a lot more people in here than that. So we have some online. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold those off until we finish people in the room. Um, but if maybe we can start from the front over here, and, and if you'd like to come make a comment, and then I'll just move down the line. My name is Earl Moon. I've uh, lived here for 55 years. And I love the ruralness of it. So I moved from Southern Idaho to here. And uh, I live on Ben Morris Road. And I'd hate to see that piece of property change into a pavement and lights. Uh, I got nothing against these folks. And I'm welcoming you to the neighborhood. But um, I don't need the gas. You like to start with your name and watch that clock. My name is Patricia Cole, and uh, I feel the same as everybody here. Uh, we waited for five years to be able to build on our property and move up here, and uh, we certainly would not have built our home and invested all of our money into building that beautiful home had we known that we were gonna have a gas station put on the corner. Um, 
we moved here from a very busy place and rural is what we wanted. And I am just totally opposed to this gas station going in. Some of the people that live in Willow and uh, crossings at Willow Bay, um, their homes will face that area at nighttime. And I don't think it's fair to those people who own properties to build their homes and have to look at that as well. Any of those front houses that are facing out, I just think it's wrong. So I oppose it completely. on this side of the room for now. Hello, my name is Michelle Plagerman, and the only thing I just kind of like to comment on is this business, and we've all seen businesses come and go. Some fail, some succeed. What if this business happens to fail? What happens to the property then? Does it become an eyesore that's there forever? I currently run the world of the for approximately six months, and I tend to live in the things are subject to change, and strips to place where they're spilled at the same point. Sure, I got a tape full of gas, but sometimes uh, it's oversight. Um, so I welcome the fact of having uh, something new that we can get gas. And I can't go to the gas station, maybe just to chat and talk with people and kind of catch up on things. I think it sounds great. So thank you. I, I'm for it. My name's Darla Benton, and I live on Ben Morris Road, which isn't too far from the blue box. And I guess my main concern is the traffic. Uh, Dufert Road has gotten so bad that, especially in the wintertime, you just take your life in your hands to go to town. And I think most of us that live out here have gas tanks that we fill up uh, in bulk, and we just don't need a gas station, um, especially when there's so many gas stations so close to our properties and uh, pre-planning is a great idea, but I just, I just really feel like that corner especially is going to be become something where there'll be a lot of wrecks because of all the roads and trying to come in um, from 95 and turn on to Bay road. There has been dangerous people fly by there 45 miles an hour. Uh, nobody does that. They do 60. So I, I'm really against it. Uh, my name is Karen Amundsen, and I've never had an allergic reaction before until last fall. And it's pretty scary. I plan ahead. I have a list always on my counter. And when I needed something, the little cafe down at Bay Road didn't have it. They had pediatric Benadryl. I know we have a helipad that could have come in and got me, but it would be nice. And there are certain things that would be convenient to have there. And uh, I think it can be constructed in a very beautiful way that would not take away from the environment. And 95 is 10 miles to this. Dufert Road is not right off of 95. Uh, 
Um, I, my name is Kathy Friedland. And all of that land you see to your right of the blue and continuing south to the um, Bay Crossing is land that has been in my family since the early 1900s. Um, I'm, I'm not opposed to change. I understand that things change. The Ben Morris Road, my uncle Ben Morris used to live there. That he was the only resident on that road. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of change. Um, my concern is some of the other things that are addressed in the narrative of the zoning. And it's uh, light industrial with housing above, uh, cottage style living, um, potential for uh, uh, approval of a mobile home park. There's a lot of things in that narrative that go way beyond a gas station and convenience store. And Mr. Hammond may not be gonna do that, but is Mr. Hammond always gonna own that property? To my understanding, the zoning goes with the property. So if somebody else were to purchase that, would that be something that would be available for them to do on that land? That, that's my question. Uh, I think what we'll do now is take a, a little break. <laughs> so, uh, the time is 6.32 p.m. The chair calls for a 10-minute recess. The hearing will, resu will resume at about 6.42. And um, I remind the public that uh, commissioners are not going to talk about this file. If you're in the bathroom, if you slip me five $100 bills, I might <laughs> say something. Um, in fact, we, we haven't even talked about the file between ourselves before this meeting um, because that's, that's the rule. So just remind you of that. And um, if I had my gavel, I'd gavel it. We'll have that recess now.
The meeting will come to order, please. Please find your seats. I don't have a gal. He's powerless. Good strip. Can I have you all find a seat? Shut your mouth and open your ears. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to uh, pick up from where we left off, middle of uh, public testimony. Some people may have shifted around a little bit. We do have some room that wasn't here before over in the seats. Um, did anyone on this side of the room not have a chance to uh, speak yet? Okay. We'll start at the front here. We got you, we got you, ma'am. Okay, you're the applicant. Uh, sitting in the chair? Okay. Um, Sorry. <laughs> Mike's going off track there. Yeah. Good evening. My name is Larry Madosky. Um, I wasn't planning on speaking, but I, I do want to, to say that uh, I do support many of the comments in opposition um, to the to the project. I might just let you know that um, in one of my prior lives, um, I actually was on the Board of Zone Adjustment. So I understand the, the, the process that you folks are going through, and I respect it very much. You have to weigh the pluses and the minuses of each thing that comes before you. I also did a lot of development um, in a prior life. And I, I believe that what they're doing here is just not making sense for what they're presenting. If they wanted to have a gas station, Mini Mart, and I've developed many of them, they should have carved out about an acre, acre and a half, and come to the commission for a zone change for that acre, acre and a half, and then that would have been pure. But instead, they're trying to rezone the entire parcel, and that just leaves a wide open berth for a whole lot of things that are not being discussed here tonight. And um, and possibly even at the commission, but the bottom line is that if their intent was as pure as they're trying to make it sound, then you carve out an acre, an acre and a half, you put a gas station in, a mini mark, and and you call it a day. But instead, they're they're now wanting to cut it up into one acre lots instead of the five acre minimums that are there. They could take out the um, the parcel for. Uh, the gas station and still have, um, you know, acreage left that would be consistent with the, the rural residential um, uh, environment in which they currently bought. So it just, it just seems, I don't know, there's just, it just seems like there's a little rat running around somewhere. And I'm not trying to be accusatory and saying that, that they don't have intention on doing the, the gas station. But the bottom line is that if that's really what the intent is, you carve out the acre, acre and a half, you put, come here for the gas station, you get it approved, and you move on. But you don't start, start parceling up one acre lots. And, down, it's, and those one acre lots are zoned um, for, the, uh, for this new zoning. So it, it, it's just wide open. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of wide open stuff there. I would just highly caution you about recommending approval. Answer one part of that briefly. The, uh, we only in this county we only zone like full parcels, so it's difficult for the applicants. I don't know. I'm not, I don't mean to advocate one way or another, but um, that's why the whole parcel is being zoned. Is that you think, sure? Good evening. My name is Diane Madoski, and. My name is Diane Madoski, and I also oppose the project um, for all of the reasons that everyone else has been opposing it. And in regard to the reasoning that you know you might not be able to get what you need, i.e., Benadryl in the middle of the night, who's to say that the gas station Mart would have Benadryl in the middle of the night? Um, we don't know those things. 
Um, maybe the vein market usually carries it and they happen to be out. The same thing could help happen at a convenience store at a gas station. Also, what kind of gas station? Is it going to be two pumps, 20 pumps? Is it going to be a truck stop? Uh, I, I don't live right there. I live about a mile west of there. But I'm wondering... What is it going to sound like in the middle of the night when the big trucks with the air brakes want to stop for gas all of a sudden? All these people that live very near there are not only going to be disturbed by the traffic, but by the stop and go of traffic. So I strongly oppose the project. My name is Joe Mock. I live, uh, again, about a mile to the west of this location. And my beef or my oppositions project is because when you buy property in this area, you look at a general plan, you rely on the general plan. It said rural residential five. There's another committee that worked on it. It was mentioned briefly by the staff about revising the general plan. And it says neighborhood. And as far as I'm concerned, neighborhood, rural residential five, that is not commercial in any way, shape or form. The other thing is the consultant used uh, Priest Lake as an example where there's rural service centers and so forth. Well, that's a long distance away from, uh, you know, what is it, 40, 50 miles up there from Priest River? Um, I can see a, a reasoning for rural service centers in that area, but it's not a case here where you're 10, 15 minutes either way to go get what you need. And that's what I have to say. Go to the back row. Yes, my name's Dale Remsburg. I've been a resident of this basic county, bounced off in and out a time or two for 64 years. I've seen it grow, grow, grow. Every time we cater to the tourists, the locals suffer one way or the other. It's just inevitable. My question is, who's gonna be responsible for environmental impact uh, charges? Who's gonna be responsible or infrastructure improvements. There's got to be infrastructure improvements because every time this type of thing comes in, we look at increased housing coming in, everything goes with it. Excuse me for being shaky, I'm diabetic, I'm high on sugar right now. <laughs> Burger King. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we always see the increases in our property taxes, everything else is going up. Who's going to pay for all the infrastructure improvements? Durford at this time is absolutely in need of widening and shoulders. All the back roads are getting to that point. Who's going to pay it? Are the developers going to pay it? I kind of doubt it. It's going to get stuck to the taxpayers once again. And that's pretty much what I have to say at this time. I'm totally against it. I'm Jim Schiffler. I have a horse ranch just south of this. I've been there for 42 years. Uh, I'm living my dream, as many of you are. And there is no gas station in my dream. Thank you for your time. My name is Hannah Durbin and I live on Ben Morris Road. I bought in 2003 and um, have 56 acres. 
I like it. I love it. I don't want to move. I don't like change. Um, I think this proposal for the zoning change, um, the possibilities with that come with that are scary to me as a homeowner in that area, um, just because of um, it not being defined exactly what they want. Um, I would ask that you please listen to those of us that do live out there. Um, I've raised four boys. I love the space. I love the quiet. I love having the dark sky with the stars every night. Yeah, traffic is increased, but, um, and I understand that's inevitable, whether it's a gas station, convenience store, multifamily housing, whatever's coming in, I'm not in favor of it. Um, just because we buy large pieces of property or smaller acres, um, because we like that environment and we want it to stay that way. Thank you. We're out in the hallway now. <laughs> no, nope. anybody else? I thought I saw someone else. All right, is there anyone else in the room that would like to share public testimony? Is there anybody online? Okay, how many? Two online, okay. Susan, go ahead. Are you looking for Wayne Martin? Yes, Susan Martin. Yeah, that's right. Or Susan Martin, sorry. Uh, Wayne Martin, I'm speaking on Susan's a uh, couple of different things. I hope that the owner is going to listen to what the people are saying and reconsider his gas station convenience store. Uh, the community does have a cafe where people do go to for food and they eat, they talk there. The comment was made about, you know, well, they can come for neighborhood watch and talk about crime. The Grange, which is down just a little bit from there, we hold neighborhood watch meetings. We have community activities. There's other activities that take place at the Grange for the community. So there are things that are going on and the need for something like that is not necessary, my opinion. I do know with the subcommittee, the comp plan that they did, it was designed the way that they wrote it up for 10 acre minimums for residentials. It was also that the growth was addressed that it was to take place from cities outward into the rural area. Putting this in is going to put it into the middle of the rural area. As the planning group, you can recommend a no in your comments to the county commissioners on your report. You do not have to give them a yes. Uh, many people are against this. Look at the number of people that have been there. I've only heard three people that have said, Yes, RV park. I'm curious as to where that RV park is. Recreational people, we always are prepared when we go out. Uh, Round Lake, Sagal is closer. Uh, if you're looking at the water launch areas, almost all of them have fuel for the boats and all. And like I said, most people are prepared. This is the early planning stage. I had the same concern the other gentleman said. Not planning on a mall. Well, he can change that very easily after you guys give him commercial permission to go with a, com um, a commercial part on that. Uh, this is going to damage the dark sky for the residents out here. Um, I don't know if he's thinking he's gonna have that station open 24 hours. I don't see that he's gonna make money uh, trying to do that. I will say that the community out here has fought development that's been out here uh, and they probably if it's approved by the county commissioners are probably going to fight this not saying that they will but probably um, and I'm surprised that the attorney isn't there for the county because I don't think he'd like to comment about the $500 bill uh, that's on record having been said anyways thank you for listening have a good evening gentlemen Next person online. Dave, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me okay? I can hear you, go ahead, you got three minutes. Oh, yeah, okay, Dave Bowman for the record. I, I'm not sure where to start here. This whole thing is a bit of a soup sandwich. Uh, staff presented this as an application to go from, excuse me? 
I think that's well, if this is Dave, he's online. <laughs> are we on? Are we on? I can hear you, Dave. We're... Okay. Well, somebody's talking all over me, and I'm losing time. Stanford had this an application to go from R5 to Rural Service Center, but the application is actually requesting a zone change to neighborhood commercial. There is no such zone as neighborhood commercial. That's a land designation. Uh, you cannot have retail gasoline or any kind of retail sales in an R5 zone. I'd like to ask of staff or have the commission of staff, why are you not required? This, this application should never even been accepted. It should be a request for a comprehensive plan change first. Uh, to rural service center would be allowed in uh, neighborhood commercial. Well, now I'm losing my notes here. I got so much going on. Anyway, yeah, neighborhood commercial. It is a land use designation, not a zone. Uh, staff failed to mention that this parcel contains prime ag soil, which is appropriate in Ag Force 20 or certainly not in, in a commercial zone. Uh, let's see, where do we go? Um, yeah, rural service center per the comprehensive plan is not allowed in rural residential. Um, so I got a comp plan mention, uh, amendment. There's no application of five additional one acre lots. You know, is this just a back door to get R5 turned into a, 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 a like a suburban zone or something to get five one acre lots in there for the family? And is the gas station just a distraction? Um, the staff staff presented this map that was supposedly from the uh, sub area plan. I don't believe that map was ever in any sub area plan that was. And first of all, even if it was, it's not relevant to this. That's something that might happen in the future as a recommendation. But I think that map was produced by the planning department or maybe by someone Mr. Grimm knows, I don't know, but it's pretty to present that as something that the comprehensive, uh, sorry, the subway plan wanted. Um, well, I'm running out of time here. So I guess I'll just leave it at that. Uh, but I think really you need to recommend denial of this. And uh, yeah, I'll second the $500 comment, highly appropriate. Uh, that's a Okay, thank you, sir. And is anybody else online waiting? Yeah. Oh, there's a new one, okay. Bruce, go ahead. Bruce, can you hear me? Looks like you're muted, Bruce. So, how's that? Now we can hear you, go ahead. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, Bruce Whitman's my name. And um, I, I support many of the comments that were made in opposition to the zoning change uh, that we've heard tonight. I, I won't revisit those, but I do want to build on one of them. And then I want to give you a little different twist on a couple of them that, that, uh, uh, that we've heard about, but maybe, that we, maybe I'll give you the rest of the story, so to speak. So in, in terms of um, emphasizing a, a point that was made a little while ago, but yet you didn't hear a lot of people make this point was if Mr. Hammond doesn't own the land forever, we could see a mobile home park, we, as I understand it anyway, after reading the docs. And we also could see, you know, um, multifamily housing. I don't, think, I don't think those things are consistent with the maintenance of the rural character of the area uh, and certainly, you know, would not be welcomed by the citizens. So, that's one thing. Secondly, we've heard we've heard about traffic and, and a concern about you know extra traffic in the area. Even if there isn't, let's just say for the moment there's no extra traffic. But I think we're, what we're going to have is is congestion because we'll have folks entering and exiting the, the crossing across the street, almost directly across the street. At the same time, we've got fuel tankers and customers entering and exiting the, the service station. So there, that does create additional risk in the, in the traffic in that area, which, again, won't be welcome. Um, 
thirdly, there was discussion about, well, look, this, this could, this fuel sta uh, service station could provide, um, you know, for the folks who are boating in the area right down at the, at the marina associated with the crossing. Well, there, and correct me if I'm wrong, but, but uh, the last I knew there was a, a fuel dock right at that marina, you know, for 24 hours. So it's not needed because the boaters are already taken care of. And those are the points I, I wanted to make. Probably didn't make them as well as I could have, but but thank you very much. I, I appreciate your time. Okay, thank you, sir. And anybody else online? Okay. Uh, last chance. Anyone want to share public testimony at this time? Okay. The next phase of the public testimony period of the meeting is commissioners have a chance to have some discussion, ask questions um, before we close public testimony. Yeah, we we added that that phase because it actually follows that fire mechanic code to have a discussion. Anything you want to ask of the public at this time, or um... you know, as as far as uh, the fuels and stuff, there's been a, there was several comments regarding the fuels and stuff. I I know that the DEP requires a double containment. And maybe the representative of the applicant can go ahead and address that. Um, the lighting, the traffic, which I believe Garner County Road and Bridge addressed, the back and forth of the comment from the uh, There was a comment, uh, Dave Bowman, his, his connection wasn't very good, but I heard a couple things I jotted down. Um, and I may be wrong here, but I, the way I interpret what I heard was, uh, a comp plan was made. And so if the applicant's representative can go ahead and, and cover that, I already kind of know the answer to that. And I think the applicant's representative can go ahead and or staff can go ahead and address that. Um, the prime egg soils, you know, that that's kind of an interesting one because we, we just had a discussion regarding that. Um, and uh, Unless that soil down there has been irrigated at least two or more years of the prior four, it's not considered primary green. That's when USDA and NRCS is running our comprehensive plant. Um, so those are the things that maybe we can try to get staff or the applicant to go ahead and address. Um, I'd also be interested to know how prime ag soil fits into our current zone. Because we've always had a conversation about prime ag soils and then right. doing a 20 or 10. Right. Well, and there's been some new information. I can say in the last few weeks on the things that I saw in the process of being kind of re verified, clarified. Okay. Maybe yeah, the, 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 the soils okay. questions. Yeah. And so, um, so those are just kind of the things that I would like to hear from from the applicant staff. Um, I understand that there's a lot of concern about um, there's also comments regarding the aquifer. I don't know how deep the wells are in that area. Maybe the applicant has an idea. Um, people are correct if this gets rezoned to rural. <laughs> Service center that goes with the land. Um, same as a conditional use permit. Um, we're, we're in discussions right now, so we can't take any more comments. Those are some. <laughs> I'm getting comments that never came here. Oh, so. Hang on. It's on. It's just. It's <laughs> Looking in, uh, you know, I was listing a lot of the comments were based upon um, reasons why they might have moved here, or feelings for, you know, changing the enjoyment of their area or things like that. I think one of the things that has to be understood is we're here to recommend approval or denial based on the property rights that are with the land currently. And if that property is does fit the characters for a rural service center. I think staff has shown that it did. Um, I believe that looking through that, um, I haven't heard anything that 
to me that says that it doesn't, you know, so that's what I'm looking for, right? You know, was there something that, I, that came to light that changed my idea as opposed beyond, beyond this or that? But I think some of the stuff that is helpful to understand is these properties in rural fives and tens or even egg 20 forest land have underlying rights in this process of going through these changes are something that anybody can petition for on different pieces of property. And that recommendation is gonna, you know, whether it's pro, for, or against will be then put forward up to the county commissioner. Um, when I hear worries about that, it sounds like the traffic has gotten like insane. It was bad on Dufer, you know, a couple of years ago. I, I love the base more, uh, you know, I think that that spot there, and there's a couple on 41 too that probably are prime for a traffic light. It's reality. I know Segal's getting a light at um, Segal Road next year, right? Um, I just look at places like that and I see, you know, the, the stuff that they're saying there is gravel out on the road. There are cars in that ditch, and uh, it's a it's a it's a weird corner for it's not weird for people that have been here for 30 or 40 years. We, we know that there's a corner there. And Dufer takes a hard right um, when you're heading to Priest River, but I think uh, I think things like this are. You know, I just look at it as like that's probably like the way as if you grow, you get bigger. That's probably how it goes. Traffic lights. That's my thoughts. So I'm just rambling on. <laughs> you know, and there was one other comment I wanted to make. Maybe the public here is not privy to. Uh, there was fifteen. I could pull them up, but I think Jenna was at 15 letters in support of this. Well, there's a handful. Yeah, there was, there was 12, 15 letters in support of this. 22 letters in support of this. Okay. Um, and the only other thing I can maybe comment on, it, and maybe this, but I'm just going to say it now. In our housing component under objectives and policies, our County should encourage a mix of residential and commercial uses where appropriate services and access to transportation are available. And uh, that's in the housing component, objectives and policies, our comprehensive plan. Listening to one of the comments from the gentleman, the last gentleman who spoke online was that it would put this uh, right in the middle of a rural area, like in the dead center of like this rural area. And I think that's the idea of a rural service center is to be like servicing something in rural. And I think that's why they store is there. It's because there's a need for certain things. Now I'm not saying that, you know, I can't look at something and say, well, they stores down the road. So I'm gonna deprive this land of having the same opportunity. But, you know, those are things that just again, be interesting to hear from the applicant's representative Go to the uh, go to the bottom. I just wanted to perhaps it's been already been discussed. I was interested in the applicant uh, giving a little more perspective, at least preliminarily, on his application for a for a job. Has there been an adaptation of applicant in the past? Perhaps a particular problem. I wonder but, if they have traffic counts and if there is a plan for a yeah, light already for yeah, ITD. I'm sure there is. Yeah. I know if I was, you know, looking at that site, I would definitely, you know, think that a traffic light would be beneficial. Uh, yeah, first or. Thank you, Commissioner. So a couple things, and I'm only gonna discuss the code here, not, I, I can't speak for the applicant or his intentions. Uh, concerns I heard about traffic, we did reach out to Bonner County Road and Bridge for their comment that was included in the record. I'm guessing most people have uh, possibly read his comment, so I'm not gonna reread it. Um, as far as lighting goes and screening, if we look across the street at the crossings development, um, that's a lighting plan that they were required to put in when they developed that whole subdivision back in 2006, as well as the screening. And you can see as it's matured, 
um, over time and how it's grown in. That's a possibility and a thing that has to be part of the design standards per code. Um, 12-333 use chart. That's not the only standard that the applicant has to meet. There's a whole design standards in chapter four that have to be addressed. Um, so some of that can address the lighting and how it's directed so it doesn't affect the night light sky um, by code. That has to be followed as well as screening signage standards. So you're not looking at a flying J. You're not going to see a big sign up in the air that says gas is $10 a gallon now to that effect. Um, we have standards around that. To address uh, the concern about, I guess, really what happens in the future if the applicant does sell the property, where does that go? We have a tool in place called the development agreement that can lock it down to being the gas station convenience store. So it doesn't run rapid into mobile home parts and things like that. So though the zoning may stay with it, the use may not per the zoning on development agreement. So that's a possibility a tool that is available for these situations for the commissioners to use as a recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners, as well as for the Board of County Commissioners to adopt. Um, to the gentleman that spoke to carving out uh, one acre for the gas station, good idea. Unfortunately, the code does not allow for that. The whole property needs to be rezoned for the Rural Service Center. Um, there is Rural Service Center just south of this project, just so everybody's aware of that, that currently exists. So if those folks wanted to pursue a gas station as well, they could. And that's the base store that everyone's referring to, but there's other properties, not just the base store, that are zoned Rural Service Center currently. Um, back to the prime ag soils, not a criteria worth reviewing or can't review from Rural 5 to Rural Service Center. Uh, the code doesn't address that. That comes up in different zoning designations. Um, there were some comments or concerns brought up about the comprehensive plan portion of it. So per LUPA, which is the Land Use Act, uh, Idaho Code 676511, letter C doesn't require that a comprehensive plan um, map amendment be addressed in order for a zone change to move forward. I think that addresses everything as far as the code goes. The rest of those concerns that did come up, I think the applicant can address. Commissioners, I can take any questions if you have any. Comp plan is rural residential, correct? Yes. And um, the rural service center zoning just puts in the rural, rural residential. The rural service center is compatible with. Rural residential. Uh, no. no, so if we. I think he's trying to clarify maybe what Bowman was saying that it was in not compatible with the underlying zoning, correct? That's what you're right. asking. So it, maybe you can explain that. There's case law around that already that's been determined by the courts that the map should not be the sole tool to make the designation for a zone change. It's the intentions of the comprehensive plan and what's found in the comprehensive plan in those chapters, not just a map itself. It's not a pictorial representation. If it was, um, the crossings, I hate to, sorry for you folks who live there, would never exist today if that was the case, because that was not, that was rural. And as we know now, it's own rec. Did they do a comp plan amendment at the time of that? They did not. Um, at that time, when that was happening, they were getting ready to update the comp plan. So that's how it ended up being wrecked today. And back to one other thing I'd like to address was the map I showed at the end of my presentation. That came from the sub area committee for Priest River Old Town area. That's not something planning came up with. This is something they submitted in hopes that they envision their area to look like. Um, that's online today. I pulled that off our website and read through it. So I would encourage anybody else to take a look at it. That's how those folks envision that area. Well, it gets on that way. I don't know. That's up to the planning commission and the members of the public that show up and participate in the zoning commission hearings. So, sorry, planning commission. 
I did say planning commission hearings. Oh, yeah. It's all right. <laughs> did I? I apologize. Don't show up here yeah. and talk about the comp plan, please. Apologize. You should note that those sub area plans have not been adopted by the board. They are simply public input at this point. It's a group of people that got together and gave a vision for what they expect or would like in their area. They submitted those to the county. They haven't been adopted in the comp plan and zoning code or anything like that. They, they're public documents created by members of the public is essentially public input for the comprehensive plan. So it's it's a good reference point, but not necessarily a governing document for this board to consider. Correct. Right. Yeah. Uh, I want to get clarity on our interpretation of rural service center. As I understand, it, it's kind of like a rural location that provides services that don't, at, at a scale that does not require infrastructure shift. Is that correct? That's one interpretation of it, Commissioner. Um, it, it doesn't have to be hooked up to those typical uh, urban services as we think of that we find in the city of Sandpoint or Priest River, right? The intention is that it can sustain itself on a well or probably a septic. Um, I know there's some mention in the public comments uh, as well as in the application that if they could hook up to, I guess, the Dufer water system, which is not a taxing district. So I can't speak to their association at all and how they um, sell their water. It's not something that the County gets involved with is not a taxing district. Okay. So I can't speak to that, but that's the intention. And these rural service centers really are sprinkled throughout um, the community. You can look at the Pack River store or the Samuel store, similar thing. Samuel store, I think, has a commercial designation, so a little bit different, um, but they are sprinkled in areas that abut AF zoning, rural zoning, rural 10, rural 5. So they're sprinkled throughout our community. You're welcome. Are yeah. all commissioners? I think that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioners Jeremy Grimm, for the record. Um, two things to uh, rebut here uh, in this rebuttal testimony. Um, first, in a lighthearted note, I think we know who that's driving 60 miles an hour. Joe Mock said he could get to Priest River in 10 minutes <laughs> and uh, nine miles. So you know who your speeder is. <laughs> um, you know, I, I sincerely appreciate all public input and um, concerns. I, I work for developers, uh, property owners, all sorts of folks. So I uh, appreciate you turning out and sharing your comments. Try to address um, all of them here. Um, first one, um, Commissioner Lynn Scott uh, asked about wells in the area. Um, they do vary in depth. Um, the specifics of uh, those depths, I, I don't have uh, currently, but I've seen them in the area from uh, 30 feet to 60 feet and, and beyond. Um, as you go north of this property, I know some of the flows are quite strong. Um, the traffic, um, you know, I, I defer to the expert, which is the county engineer. Um, as you saw in his comments, um, he mentioned that he didn't have concerns with traffic, the alignment of the roads, um, and uh, mentioned, uh, which I'll re-mention that um, any service station here, or general store would capture bypass or through traffic and not, um, you know, drive traffic to the area. Um, 
In terms of the rural character and rural nature of this property, I, I just want to emphasize that there are 17 subdivisions and hundreds of homes uh, currently existing within a mile and a half. And um, the crossings is approved for, I believe, 82 homes, of which only about half have been constructed. So um, this area, when it became a recreational zone property, uh, ended up becoming fairly um, intensive, whether you know uh, intentional or not. But um, that's the specific reason for this rural service center is if you look at the code, it talks about rural service centers, service tourism, service um, recreation areas, and service area residents. So um, that's exactly what this rural center zone is uh, created for. Um, there were some concerns about peacefulness and how this proposal could potentially disturb the, the peacefulness of the area. And, you know, um, First, it's not like it's a shooting range um, that's going in there. And the, the crime issue, you know, a lot of these uh, stores have video. I believe even that break in at the base store was captured on video. So um, it's likely that the Hammonds would put one of those video, you know, eyes up there. And it, it may even capture people going by on the road at 60 miles an hour. Who knows? But um, I, I don't see a convenience store or general store as a real crime magnet. Um, currently, they found needles. They've seen people transacting strange business on their property at this corner. I think, um, uh, as proposed, the development would not add to anything that's not going on there already. Um, you know, um, the Rural Service Center is specifically designed to service these recreational areas. This is a resort, a growing resort community uh, that it abuts. Um, you know, we heard the opposition tonight, which is typical. What is not typical uh, in my experience is to have several people show up in support of a project. And plus, uh, of course, there were over 20 letters of support in the file for a request to support this zone change. As regard to lighting, um, I spoke with uh, the Hammonds. They are super, um, uh, open to, uh, of course, following the code, which has standards for lighting, but um, doing shielded lighting, night sky compliant lighting. So they're great people. They, um, they're part of the community and they certainly um, wanna make this uh, an asset for the area. Um, concerns about the aquifer and gas tanks, that's all regulated by DEQ and the EPA. Um, there's the leaking underground storage tank fund the LUSC fund that service stations pay into uh, to clean up any kind of leaks, um, you know, double wall tanks, above ground tanks, et cetera. Uh, it's all very heavily regulated. Um, what's probably less regulated is when you take your boat and you take that gas line and fill it up and that gas drips as you put it back into the holder over at the marina, that's probably a greater pollutant than anything that would occur here. Um, but I understand the concern and sensitivity when say that um, we have Idaho DEQ that takes that very seriously. Uh, moving on to Mr. Bowman's comments about the comp plan, uh, future land use map. Um, as staff correctly pointed out, um, zone changes uh, do take into account the comp plan future land use map, but they broadly take into account the overall language goals and descriptions of the vision for the county. And uh, if, the, if the comp plan map was the zoning map, you would not need both of them. So um, it is a illustrative um, fuzzy map that, that provides guidance for you and the commissioners as they make their decisions. And in cases like this, where you have a property right on a boundary, um, that's exactly where you have a fuzzy or watercolor map, because of course no one could precisely identify every line and parcel in a future land use map. Um, and then finally, I just wanna emphasize that the Board of County Commissioners, uh, it was mentioned by staff, do, the, do have the authority to um, request a development agreement. And um, that action can be requested of them by the public when this goes to the commission. Um, it's, 
it, I, I spoke in favor when they adopted that because it is a valid concern that, you know, you approve a zone change for something and then the owner goes away and something else comes in. So uh, if, if the commissioners were to deem that appropriate, um, you know, to limit the uses in the rural service center zone, that is a tool they could use. I would emphasize that the rural service center um, zone is very restrictive and uh, keeps a lid on most of the uh, the most intensive use that would be allowed in a commercial zone. Um, yeah, you know, beyond that, um, you know, recognize change is is uh, difficult, but uh, there certainly are a number of area residents who see uh, this request as a positive for their community and their their area. And uh, we just would ask that you um, favorably support this and pass it on to the commissioners. Commissioners, any questions for Mr. Graham? I have a quick question for him. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Graham, could I ask you a question? So looking at Matt Mulder's like uh, response uh, from Road and Bridge, looks like there's, you know, about 20, I think it was 2,400 cars a day on due for, might've been 2,200 cars, 2,200, okay. And 741 or something on Bay Road, it looked like. 2,200 as measured at Highway 95, 470 at Bay, on Bay at the. Yeah, okay, 470. So, so looking at that, like, do we see, um, what are do you know like what are the requirements for like a stoplight or what are their thoughts there on that intersection have you talked to anybody about future plans on that intersection already as is uh, we haven't uh mr webster we haven't um sp spoken with anyone about it because it's all a bit premature typically stop lights and stop signs are warranted you run a traffic model and if it fails the model or that's what i'm wondering is, has, have they done that before in that intersection and is there accident we, reports? we have not not um, you there, there may be accident reports from bonner county um but i, I guess where i emphasize is um this isn't an induced um use like it, we're not putting um you know a walmart there that's going to induce a bunch of traffic um you know if you're driving home and you live in this area and you forgot a bottle of wine or you forgot the half and half or some eggs or whatever um, you, you, you run in there and grab it. So the belief is that you're going to be effectively drawing on the traffic that's already going, going by, uh, you know, arguably the, the biggest impact would be a, a, a delivery truck once or twice a week coming, coming to the store. But, um, at the building location permit time, even when we get there, the county has the ability to ask for studies and ask for details. Uh, to look at access and road arrangements and um, have conversations about all of that um, at such time. Thank you. Here's the applicant, come on up. Uh, Sean, I was also going to add in there that in that report regarding the traffic, they did put in a stipulation that they wanted the entrance to be off of Bay so that we didn't, you know, create more traffic coming off of Dufert and so on and so forth. But again, we're not trying to create more traffic, just capture the already passing by. All right. Uh, before we close this portion of the meeting, I just, I need to uh, address the Comment about five hundred dollars. I was joking when I said that I would take money in exchange for making comments in this class. <laughs> I see that my intent did not match the impact of my comment, so I'll rectify that in the future. One demerit. <laughs> you get one demerit. Yeah, one demerit. People are correct. Keep track of those things. The chair, the chair awards himself two demerits. <laughs> All right. Here closes the hearing for public testimony. And the, uh, the commission will now deliberate the file. Uh, commissioners, deliberate. You know, I had totally forgot that we we uh, implemented that ability for a developmental agreement. I, I, we haven't seen one yet. 
I don't believe we may have discussed it at one time, but uh, we have not recommended it. Uh, well, so did actually on that road and that zone change for the wedding venue. Uh, no, this is for a zone change. Uh, we have twenty year fence so down a sub twenty road. Okay. It hasn't gone to the board yet, so we don't know if that that will have been taken up. It's okay. been drafted. Okay. Um, yeah. But that's the that's the first one. I think that was it. Okay. Um, Could you restate that in shorter words for the public? Maybe me. Um, I I, I bet Jake could probably explain a lot better. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I agree. Um, I think I know what you're talking about. I interject without having to. It's uh, uh, this portion of the meeting is just the size of the other one. Like Mr. Graham mentioned, um, Chapter 9 of the Land Use Code was adopted this past May, which allows for the board to implement conditional zoning where they can restrict specific uses, they can add timelines, they can add fees, and there's a whole list of things they can add and, and take from, from zoning. So, if the intended use as proposed in this is a, a gas station, for example, or some residential home, that can be restricted at the zone change phase, right? So that they don't come back in in three months and say, hey, now we want to do Mini Mart, or now we want to do a hospital, or whatever else is in permitted or conditional permitted in that zone. So if it's restricted specifically, it's sort of like a deed restriction, right? So it gets recorded in the recorder's office. Um, so if he sells the land to somebody else, all they can come in and do goes with it. Or they have to come back to the board and request a modification of that development fee, which would be done in the public way. Now, can we recommend that as a, as a condition on this file? So while you deliberate that, I would stipulate in your motion to recommend, I think this is what we did last time, recommend that the board um, adopt and staff draft or the board adopt a development agreement that limits the, the commercial usage to what was stated in the application of the gas station, maybe retail, retail establishment, the retail establishment gas station. We can pull up that, that use code and we can pull, pull up the data. Yeah, because there was some public comment regarding multifamily uses there. Yeah. Um, and I don't believe that's in the application. Uh, I don't believe so. And, and just for the public to know, at this point, we can still ask, if we ask a question, uh, we, you know, we're able to go ahead and do that at this point. Um, we're not limited to just discuss amongst ourselves. We can talk to staff. You know, I, I just want to talk about traffic a little bit. I'm a, a longtime resident of Hoover Road traffic. Um, I live a couple miles past Round Lake, west of Round Lake. So I've seen the changes in the um, 48 years that I've lived there and it's you know, it's a change, it happens. And, and um, I don't I don't believe that this this uh, particular use would create more traffic. I think it would be what it is. And I think that, um, and, and I understand the issues that the neighborhood and the neighbors have about traffic. And I, I'd like to see, I mean, just in reading the uh, agency comment from Road and Bridge, um, and, and the applicant talked about that, that they recommend uh, making the access to the gas station off of Bay Road so it doesn't have that much of an impact on the more traveled road is due for road. And I'm, I'm thinking it'd be nice to, if, if we could add that as a condition for the commissioner to um, call access management. Yeah. To, to lead the lead safer road by eliminating the conflict points yeah. on the arterials. Because, you know, they could do one access from both roads and that would just make it more difficult. No, I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good idea. I think if there, we should broaden it up if there a stoplight becomes this or if there's a stoplight in the way. I can't see a stoplight. I think it will be in about five, ten years. Yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> as part of the development agreement that we've been talking about so far, is um, the access. Off Bay Road, the off the bay, mm -hmm. and also the um, I was thinking lighting about down. the uh, use questions. 
you could limit the use of the rural service center to four acres and the rest could divide by four or five. but I'm getting a lot of raised eyebrows here, so you have to have a certain lot or something that will go with it. And they just use their credits for four acres as they're applying for building location permits for their parking lot. So I think that's too gray. Yeah. If we had two separate parcels of properties already already split, we could say we're gonna limit the use of Archie, you know, family. Then this one is different, right? Yeah. That's not what we have. We have a single 11 point whatever it is, 11 point two. Yeah. yeah. And they're not, in a zone change, they're not limited to the site plan that, or like a conditional use permit, you're limited to development as presented. This is kind of a conceptual idea that they gave us that could modify over time. So, would this, or would this look different as a two year deal? Or, you know, if it was a, so in this case, the, the use as proposed is the convenience of gas station All is a permitted use in the rural service system zone. So it doesn't mean that they don't have to meet standards, lighting standards, landscape standards, uh, access standards all still have to be met. Those are just reviewed by staff rather than conditionally approved by uh, a hearing body. So there's no public hearing for that. It's similar to a uh, you know, convenience store going into a commercial district. Uh, if it's approved in the code, they still have to meet the standards. So we just do spread across two for direct zoning. We could also put in the gas station for the code. What a condition. That might be a condition in the rec. Yeah, in the rec. It, it also has been noted in the past that the development agreements are voluntary. And we talked to the board about this when they adopted it, that the sentiment from the board was, yes, it's voluntary, but if they don't agree, then we'll just deny the zone. That was their idea, right? So yes, they could agree or they could not agree, but it's up to the board to decide if the zone is appropriate. So if the, the development agreement that they feel is appropriate that they don't agree with, then they don't agree. Just, that's kind of all right. I think traffic has been covered. Um, I think Road and Bridges letter is the best we can go on for any kind of subject matter experts and certainly stewards of, of the public road system. Um, there were a lot of comments about rural character and this without a definition of rural character or standards to abide by. I have a hard time saying that rural service center is located across the street from the rack where there's already traffic. Um, so I'm not sure that I can address rural character at this high level. There's a lot of concerns in letters, not a lot. There's a few concerns in letters and also in, in uh, live testimony about gas spills. And Trying to figure out like there's state and national standards for all this, right? Yes. And those standards aren't going to be looser no. in a rural setting than they are in downtown New York, yeah, right? And there are mitigations before the fact and mitigations after the fact and events of spill and, and uh, mm -hmm. but it seems like a, a fear of the unknown really. Um, as far as taxes changing, who pays for this stuff? Just a general comment that I have on that is that commercial activity pays for most of that gas sales tax. They pay higher higher property taxes. Um, that's how that's how this sort of thing is funded. That's how infrastructure is funded. That's how the uh, I think the homes in your buy are going to have material. <clears throat> and then a thought that occurred to me about 
sorry to go back to traffic. Like this is either going to create new traffic, in which case there's demand for gas stations at the corner, or it will only it will not generate new traffic. It will just be passed by traffic that comes in, in which case the business will fail or not fail, but the traffic situation will fail. So there's a little bit of a double standard being applied here. People are going to drive to the store from nearby, so there's going to be a little more traffic yeah. there. There's going to be a more traffic, yeah. yeah. But it's the people are going to drive in from. Uh, yeah, but those people wouldn't have to drive past. The I agree. Yeah, the yeah, exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. It might reduce the traffic. Now, now you're sounding people conflicted. People from Coeur d'Alene aren't going to come up just to get gas. To get no, the they're going to come up to go to the, to put their boat. In the water. Now somebody like Messi's Burgers puts their place on that corner. Probably get a lot of traffic. True, maybe. <laughs> okay, I think those are the um, comments that I wanted to, to share out of my notes. Before the I have one point to interject from uh, director. Yeah. So Jake Cabral, planning director, for the record. So the one major difference with this file as to other zone changes you've reviewed in the past is this wasn't first changed by the comp plan, right? It is true that the underlying comp plan map on this case does not match the zone in which is which which is being requested, right? So it's not a rule. Um, that being said, this condition B under what 12-327 rural service center district. So this zone is appropriate in areas designated. So this is the comp plan designation of commercial, resort community, or transition by the comprehensive plan. If you go on to read, it says, and community plans that are served at the time of development by adequate sewage disposal services, water supply, roads, and other needed public facilities and services. So if you can deliberate on whether or not you feel this property meets that those criteria of adequate based on the use being provided or requested or um, the use being presented, that adequate sewage disposal, water supply, roads, and other needed facilities, and, and why so it is true that there's some case law and there's some county, call it case law, there's been approvals in the past where um, the, the zone was changed without the comp plan map change. And at the time, the board felt that the, the zone request and the zone matched what the comprehensive plan goals and policies and objectives, right? Um, there's some state law and state case law around that where it's gone through Supreme Court and it's been upheld. So if you can deliberate on some of that aspect of this zone. So some of the development agreement that we would look for would be like for the sewage disposal service for Anhandle Health to make sure that whatever's built there has adequate, you know, has an adequate septic system because it's going to be on septic mm -hmm. to match whatever's there for water. They have a well that would supply, you know, adequate amounts of water for XYZ. The roads obviously support this, you know, we can argue that in the facilities and uh, are needed and services, you know, it, it's going to stand on its own there based on, you know, the surrounding houses in that 1.5 area. So those are the things where I would look at, like, if we we're going to do a dev plan or anything like that, or we can just look and say, like, it's, a, it's good soil, it's going to have drainage, not next to wetlands, you know, it's 11 acres, so there's adequate space for uh, a septic system. Um, not super convinced about five new little homes popping up around there with septic systems, you know, like all working off that. I think that's something where we let the experts like can handle help, you know, decide if that's even viable for the property. Um, I like the idea of a rural service center. Personally, I live right next to a pack river store. I've been there for 20 years. It's always been great, you know, and prior to that, and it serves the needs of our area. Bay Store is awesome too. I have a four-wheeler over there from Coco Wall all the time. Love that store. Um, so, you know, looking at that under B, I think we can, you know, I don't see something in there that throws me off course. Do you guys see anything there that's that? No, the adequate sewage disposal is going to have to be, take place in with the Health Department. Yeah. As far as water supply with those one-acre parcels, they're going to have to have a shared well. Or qualify for one of the parcels down there. It, and to be clear, those are conceptually proposed. We don't have any applications in for splitting this land. I don't even know why that's a problem. Yeah. Well, that seems it, like a bad it, idea. It, concept, yeah. Yeah, and it's a good idea, in my opinion, to, to show kind of what their long term I agree. It is. Um, for sure. 
we've been ridiculed in the past where we don't have a long-term plan. It's like, oh, you're just changing the zone and what are they going to do after that? So in this case, you have a bit of a plan to kind of rely on. Or and I know the applicant seemed to be more than adamant that he's happy to have that in the development plan because I don't think they're planning something. Like that. Okay. So maybe it's if there's a worry about RV parks and some of these other things, you know, the development plan could restrict there. Propose that. This will be further discussed with the the um, the board at their hearing. So. Mm -hmm. Soils. Do we need to talk about the soils again? I don't think so. Please no. don't. <laughs> well, it's it's not part of the criteria in decisions with rural service center. It's not like if it has X number type of soil, it's, you know, this rural service center can't be permitted, right? So I don't think it needs to be deliberated on, but that's my opinion. Wanted that. so I don't want sure. Really, yeah. I mean, we can fill the record if you want to. No, I don't. I just wanted, I want to be Had the transcript. transparent. I don't want to be. Got a couple pages on soil content and we could go through. Good, no. Okay. <laughs> Matt's got a ongoing book on soils. It's great. <laughs> Well, do you have any comments down there? We don't want to leave you out of this party. The only thing I was going to say relative to water is the comment by the water resource about they didn't see any problems. Yeah. So then the last thing in that B to discuss was the expansion of an existing rural service center or creation of a new and the impact that it as long as it doesn't negatively impact the safety or function of a state highway or other roadway. So in this case, it's a roadway. Um, we have a comment from Rosen Idaho. Bridge. So if Bay you want to- road. Right. So I think they may, they address that by saying, you know, instead of coming off too far, you want the traffic and, you know, to get file for a commercial approach is what mm -hmm. they were saying off of it. We, we could add that in the development agreement that any commercial Encroachment permit only be granted off Bay Road and for this property and no encroachment permit could be granted off Duford. Uh, just, just to complete the thought on the well situation, I want to read out loud. IDWR said they don't take a position, but they could fall under their jurisdiction. Um, and basically, if there's commercial activity, then a um, special type of permit will need to be applied for and granted before the well drilling. Um, whereas if it's just in your home, then um, the permitting process can be similar. That satisfies it. Capture some of those. I didn't take very good notes on that. Yeah, me time. neither. I'm going to start writing. Did you write? This is a what, development agreement. agreement. Now, do we want to limit any of the residential uses or just that commercial use? In what do my you think? opinion, I don't think we need to limit residential. Okay. Or at all. As a matter of fact, I would from what I understand from the public, it's not going to be horribly happy if we recommend approval on this anyway. And if we go ahead and limit that to the conceptual plan that the applicant has submitted, I would think that the neighborhood may be happier instead of having full well acres commercial, commercialized pipeline too. I, I have a comment on that. I think we're doing uh, well, three three two residential use approval. Comparing uh, R5 to RSC, that is uh, rural five zoning to rural service center zoning. And um, from what I can tell, the material differences are all conditional. For example, a multifamily, uh, multifamily is not allowed in R5, but is allowed in, in rural service center with conditions. So it becomes for a body like this or if it's approved. 
the same thing goes for mobile home park and a townhouse. So I don't think there's a valid excuse here because these two uh, units were to, uh, renovated. So the commercial use is, as specified in the code, retail sales of food, gas, and sun dries. Sundries, thank you. It's late, yeah. Sundries. Hardware stores, whatever they have to figure it out. All right. All right, so I have the, uh, we're going to, you know, the development agreement is going to require the request to all of the road and bridge access access recommendations um, presented to us in their letter to uh, IDWR um, follow their application process. What else do we need? Yeah, for for yeah, that would be for the road and bridge. Anything else? I think we mentioned use only to those addressed in the application. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Then they can go get a CUP or you know or whatever. Yeah, they change the application now. Yeah. Does the app well that does the application call out that use? I don't know. Thank you, Dana. All right. Anything else we need to add to that? I believe that covers what we discussed. I think just make sure when we get to this part right here where they further move the depth plan spec with the law at that point. So when you're going to go ahead, in my opinion, and in insert this other stuff, development agreement. development agreement. Also, if you can pull that, what you had up there, just yeah, the OJ, B section, sure, that B section and in, and in, in, in make up a, a comment nope. regarding that. Yeah. Well, while you're formulating that, I'm just sticking to the um, application and what we have is the narrative of the application for most of this. Necessity and goal of this application is to develop a small scale retail establishment offering gas fuel sales, which is a community use of the road. I'll see you later. You're not squinting as hard. No, nope, we're good. It? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, Commissioner Webster, I'd like to make a motion to recommend approval of this file. Uh, I move to recommend approval of the board of county to the board of county commissioners on this project file ZC 0012-22 requesting a zone change from rural five to rural service center. Finding that it is in accord with the general and specific objectives of the Bonner County comprehensive plan and the Bonner County revised code. As enumerated in the following conclusions of law and based upon the evidence submitted up to the time of the staff report was, repre was prepared. In testimony received at this hearing, I further move to adopt the findings of fact. In conclusions of law set forth in the staff report or as amended during this hearing and direct the planning staff to draft written findings and um, uh, apply the following develop agreement. We wanna follow the road and bridge commercial access recommendations, IDWRs, um, all of their recommended application process. Uh, we would like to see the uses limited to those addressed in this application specifically. Looking at Bonner County Code 12-327 uh, Section B, reviewing uh, uh, adequate sewage disposal services, um, having those reviewed by Panhandle Health, so water supply by IDWR, road and uh, other public facility services, looked at by road and bridge and concerning any safety or impairments for the function of a state highway, I think uh, following the road and bridge commercial access recommendation. Second. 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 Mr. Waker, second the motion. A motion and a second. And, um... Or I call for a vote that I, I just think the application is not good enough to be fair. Please be fair, send out and all that. I'll and I'll finish off by saying, you know, that uh, 
uh, everything is uh, draft written findings and conclusions. Uh, I'd like to add that any conclusions to reflect this motion have the chairman sign and transmit all interested parties that this action does not result in the taking of private property. I'm going to call back the motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Commissioner Wake, you second it. Um, uh, I'll call votes on my left, please. You, you can call for discussion of the motion if you want. You want to discuss this motion before we? I, I think it adequately covers it. You know, I think we, as long as staff's okay with that, the safety issues are addressed and the motion on all those. Uh, I, think, I think we have enough there to transmit that recommendation to the board, and then we'll draft up that development agreement as presented um, and take it to the board. And then uh, if the applicants don't agree, they can make that argument with the board um, and that that development agreement, and we can continue that that hearing forward until we agree the board and the applicants on on the conditions that should apply. So just, uh, more or less, you don't have to hammer out all the details now. I think you have a good recommendation. I think the board can understand what your what your intent is, and then we can continue to finite the details. Refine it a little bit. For us. It's almost late. Yeah. <laughs> okay, anybody else want to discuss on the commission before we go to vote? Commissioner vote from my left, please. Commissioner Webster, aye. Commissioner Lewis Scott, aye. Commissioner Wakeley, aye. Commissioner Marble, aye. The uh, commission has voted in favor, five voting in favor, and one vote against. So the motion carries. That ends this portion of the meeting. If you only have one file tonight, that's Linda Mary from board. We have that scheduled already. They don't do it, so they, uh, yeah, we we schedule it with the board. We can tell you in a second. It's probably in the next month. So if they can't, then you can call them on the phone. Yeah, it won't be for a few weeks. There you go, December. And that's a it's a Wednesday one thirty in the afternoon meeting with the board. So it's it, always in this same room. Oh. And it's all also on Zoom, right? It's also on Zoom. It's also on Zoom. The link to Zoom or you, YouTube, you can, but if you want to, you want to provide comment, you can jump on. The link is on our agendas on our website. If you have a hard time finding it, just give us a call and we can help you out with it. Or send us an email, we can shoot it over to you. When you find out, tell everybody that's not here, <laughs> so that they can are aware of it. Right. Yes. Yeah, we don't do the agency comments or the agencies we don't notice again we do the neighbors every hearing that's within 300 feet you'll get a you'll get a, a notice uh -huh. well it's got to be landscape for the use but there's specific landscape requirements under development in chapter four if i remember right so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, like down shielding and lightings, it's not like they can just do what they want. So, Zoom is now turned off. Yeah, it's, it's not like do it. Yeah, so our commercial intent of the user is to meet all those commercial standards. restrictions, it still has to. Yeah. So we we review those as staff, and we don't issue the permit until all those conditions. Like same with stormwater permits. Uh, so they're still limited on the amount of impervious surface they create. So there's a lot of standards that still get upheld. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. And this is this is an unusual one. We don't usually get. A lot of opposition and uh, um, you know support. So, mm -hmm. sure. So, whether for residential question, right? Yeah, and, and they're yeah, and that they have to meet their own standard before they can. But we feel free to give me a call. We can discuss it more. But we know we're still in the public meeting. So, yeah, you're good. Okay, the mention of the different water system. Is that the crossing at Willow Bays and their water system? And how much reserve capacity above and beyond for the 82 houses did that water system originally be designed for? Well, I'm asking, I have a friend that had commercial property in sale and he had, um, say, 20 acres um, and he had restaurants, gas stations, and grocery stores by a lot of travel. Mm -hmm. Son of a gun, I the water system going to uh, Jerusalem. Fulfilled um, the requirement yeah. for um, gas yeah. station has to have so much water for a hydrant. 
they put out a fire. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, there is no hydrants out there. So there is no water system put out a fire. So, it, so it I just asked them, they said that part of the I'll send a, zoning you know, requirements. Yeah. So he told the people take the hydrants and you build a storage or something, more power to it. But I'm just going, I live on Doofy Road. So water system is very um, dear to me in a sense. And the wells are anywhere from 40 feet to 400 feet. The um, no, section no. that's just north and um, east of them, Roger Sparling, his wife, and spoke. Their wells at about 300 and some to 400 feet depth. My well is about 120 foot depth. And all of a sudden, if you have to take fire suppression requirements for a gas station, you got to have a hellacious storage tank or some big pumps mm -hmm. to meet it. And I'm going by that. We're a rural community. There isn't a water system that they can just go across the street and tap in. And so. Right. So they still have to meet all the requirements from any other state agency that, that reviews gas stations. So. Right. Water may not be the only full There's other areas that they use. So, I don't know, but yeah, they call the state agency. We don't have to call them. They're not here. <laughs> <laughs> then no. I'm just going to <laughs> give me all I was going to say. Nothing that was ever mentioned was the upgrading of fire services for fire issues, such as having tanker trucks delivering and oil spills and other. Right. Things. So that's where we rely on reach out to the agency. And that's the fire district. We reach out to them and say, hey, this is the project. They chose not to come. We're not experts by any stretch of the mean. They they're aware of the proposal. And what you're saying they're is not being experts. I would say many of the fire district falls into the same category. They're not experts either. And the, I'm not saying I would like somebody in the county to be an expert to review those type of issues. Not saying that the Sago Fire District needs to have somebody all of the newest and latest codes that are coming out and everything keeps changing because it does. And I'm not against it. I'm not against this project. But right, I'm just saying we reach out to the fire department and they they are the experts. You have to recognize right. somebody as experts and say default to their expertise. But I'm just saying I'm not yeah. sure that the Sago Fire Department has people that are truly experts in understanding. City codes, county codes that are not part of the fire engine and the water that they're putting on it. So, so and, that, that hearing, the hearing for this has been closed. We got to keep on, we have a couple other agenda items we got to get to. Okay. Um, so, if you want to talk the development and whatnot, feel free to stop by and we can discuss no, it with us. To develop it. And I'm one property away. And it isn't that I'm against development, but I don't. I don't want to turn around and have them get into a development situation where all of a sudden they need a 3,000 gallon water reservoir. And where's that water going to come from? But compete with my well. Okay. Now I have a government, uh, US, I'm an official test well state. Okay. Yeah. And so I got 40 years of a track record of what's in my water. So. If there's a spill, I'll know. Thank you. Staff updates. Staff have any? Sure. sure. <laughs> I, always, I should always have a couple of things to talk to you guys about, right? Well, in in looking back, you know, those residential places, you know, Barn County, because they're less than five acre trucks, are going to be required to have a two thousand gallon water storage for each one of those. Parts they got to yes. for fire suppression. They have to meet the fire suppression standards. Right. And, and those are things that Sego Fire. They know. know about. So oh, yeah. One, um, yeah, it hits eight o'clock and my brain just goes fuzzy. I don't know, it's like it just shuts off. One note uh, when making motions, one thing you could do, which might make it a little se more seamless, read the motion as presented and then say, I further move to. Okay. And then just add it at the bottom. It, it'll, don't so you don't have to try to split it. Split and it then, there. yeah, yeah so then okay, that's, that's what you do. I further move to, right? And then typically when there's a motion on the floor, you always ask for, you know, discussion. So if you, if you feel like there's, especially if you feel like there's opposition within the, the, the committee here that uh, you can have further discussion on that motion to see if 
if it needs to be modified. So, and if it's, you know, Bob comes in and says, hey, you know, I don't agree with this condition you just added. You can say, I'm going to amend my motion too. And then the second amends it and then move on. So just some kind of a- Can we put Robert that little, the little tidbit, like maybe in like, parentheses or something underneath the conclusion you know like uh just that because i'm going to forget what you just said like i further move to amend or, you know if like if it just says like if you want to say something or if you want to add additional i don't know i'll forget or you'll just have to remind me a couple of times that's fine I, I don't mind reminding you so um and it sounds i mean the idea of this chapter nine the development agreements for zone changes the conditional zone changes if you, it sounds like that's exactly what's working right that we have this idea instead of just denying it because you know you hear an outcry from the public saying we don't want all these uses let's limit the use specific to what they're proposing so that's i think a good thing that's what the board wanted when they adopted this back in may so good job kudos right i'd like to see the development agreements out of this because sure. um that'll help us understand better what they're what they're going to do so there was one that right there was one that was adopted and signed off by the board for the zone change the DC 40 Klein, um, it was the zone change to industrial for that. Oh yeah, that wood. The wood processor, firewood processor by Kokolala. Oh, okay. So after you guys recommended, um, they took it and Jeff uh, was really opposed and he's like, I wanna limit, can we? And so we said, yes, we continued the hearing. We drafted something, uh, legal approved it, and then they signed off on it. And so, the applicant. Mm -hmm, he agreed. He's like, yeah, that's exactly yeah, what I wanna do. And, that. I'm fine with being limited. So, and that's what we did. So that we have one that's actually made it all the way through. The other one, I think, goes to the board next week, right? Uh, yes. yeah, Daniel. So, right. So, yeah. So we'll see what the board says next Wednesday. That was the road condition to improve the road. So I don't know which road. Yeah. Is that Gypsy Bay or what was that? You guys forget things when we miss a meeting, huh? Dude, right? It's yeah. Been great. That was <laughs> last month. Other, you know, welcome, Bob. So this yeah. is his, yeah, what a first meeting, right? So you never know uh, when it's going to draw a crowd. It typically, when we, when we, oh, right. Yeah. So we never know when it's going to draw a crowd, what projects. So I, yeah. Probably a surprise. Yeah. So sometimes people, like there was a, conditional use permit for a multifamily in Coquilala we thought would get a crowd and nobody showed up it was like look at that so. so I hear you know like this is something and I don't know what to say or how to address it but there's a gentleman over here and uh, you know we, when we were talking about uh, I don't even know if it's in his name but somebody's comment from from Road and Bridge basically he's like oh, don't do it. right you know like so I'm like, I'm a professional I, like engineer, right? I, I know I'm like he knows what he's doing right you know so uh, I, I wanted to kind of be like, you know, address him, but I didn't want to break up the meeting. But like, I don't know the best way to deal with something. Like, you just ignore it is best thing there. Yeah. Okay, you ignore it if, if if it happens a bunch, just say the chatter Jake, over here. Jake, like, Jacob, you, you did a good job. It was like four times. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and then later on, it came back. Yeah, you so, did a good job. Yeah, it was good to shut it down right away. But I'm inviting you to do the same thing. I don't, I, I'm, I'm, I rub people the wrong way, right? I'm a little too harsh. So I'd rather, you know. Just... I'll, I'll, order, I'll order four more gavels. And... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and I'm thinking about, during that meeting, about how can I, I keep it. To, I need to practice this, so that I have some boilerplate at the tip of my tongue to say, go ahead, right? Just running on the spot so that it doesn't get out of hand. Yeah. On the other hand, we've talked about, like, letting some things slide because, Somebody just has a question from the audience, and it's a reasonable question that can enter forward. And I kind of like the idea. I don't know. I, I don't mind it when everybody laughs, right? Like if it's just something that everybody can laugh at, like you know. Yeah. But the the one sided stuff is tough, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's where you got to you know draw that line. Anyways, it's uh, uh I'm tired, I'm exhausted. Yeah, I get you. Well, let me let me go over a couple other minor changes. So. Um, there's a Title 11 change going to the board next Tuesday, which is going to add some Panhandle Health review to building location permits. Okay. So that's not a land use. It's not a LUPA. It's not a Title 12 change. So it doesn't go through hearings. It, it's a, yeah. So feel free to take a look at that. Um, if you want a copy of it, I can email it over to you. There's been some people that have been curious about it. So we're like to get a copy. Yeah. Okay. If I remember, I'll send it to you. I'll try. 
Um, maybe I'll just send it to the whole group. Yeah, send it to the group. That'd just be blind great. copy all you guys and send it out. And, um, yeah, it's we're changing a number of small things in there, um, but the big change is Panhandle Health, and that's been something we've been working on since like May of this year. We started in the spring, we stopped for the summer because everyone got really busy. We started up again in the summer and we'll talked about some. Well, think, yeah, private. Been, did I hear you right the other night? There. So now, if you go get a perk test, it's good for two years, not just two one. years. Yeah, that's a well, PhD. That's change. a huge one. Yeah, actually. and I think they cut their fee in half from that's, 150 to 75 for a renewal. Ahead. Cool. Yeah, for cool. another two years. So, so I think they, year renewal. they they heard a lot of cries and moans and complaints. So they made some changes. So I want to say the guy's name is Travis, but I could be wrong. Jason, it's either Jason or Travis um, from, from PhD who who works with Catherine. Uh, uh, Mark. Is it Jason? What, what's his name? Who from uh, who is on the panel of health? What's his name? He does, used to do the Sago, and I think he does now. Uh, Tim. Tim French? Oh, Tim French. Tim French. Tim? Nope. No, no it's, it's, a Tim. it's either Jason or Travis. So I had two good friends growing up named Jason and Travis, and I get him mixed up with which one it is. So, I don't know. Every right? Jason and Travis. That's good. Right. Yeah, I don't know. It happens. So, um, so that changes next Tuesday. Last week, they adopted a Title 12 change. Um, for those that weren't in, are aware of it, um, there aren't any, the, the one major change in that, I, I think I told you guys about this last month, was um, it's changing the, for zone changes and other amendments. So the one thing that affects you guys is zone changes. Um, rather than say why the amendment is necessary, we change it to the why the amendment, the reason for the request, right? right? So it pulls out the discretionary aspect of the content for, of that application, uh, makes it less subjective, right, for staff. Um, so yes, there's that change. The other one is under the 12-216 where it talks about amendments to the title. We added um, that zone changes are, I'm paraphrasing, I don't have them memorized, uh, are essentially judged against the criteria found in chapter 3.2. So the zoning districts that we always analyze aren't established in the code anywhere for us to actually jump to and analyze. But that's what so you've always done. It's the way we've done it since 2008. And I, we had yeah. some good arguments for it. Like the meeting was last week. Um, the the board approved it unanimously. So um, just so you know, that's it really doesn't affect the way you guys look at it, but it's just the underlying code that gives us the authority to how we review something's been updated to conform to how we've always done it. So yeah. Um, other than that, staff changes. Um, if you haven't met them yet, I have two new permit techs that are reviewing BLPs. Um, Teresa uh, came from outside. She's learning quickly. It was like a fire hose for the first week. Her eyes got real big, um, but she's she's <laughs> she's in it now and and working really good. And then Rob, we stole from the assessor's office. And he jumped in and just started rolling. He's doing really really good. Yeah, he has a lot of, of awesome experience to kind of rely on. So um, he's been pretty handy. Can you see Chad at all anymore? You know, I I avoid it. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no. I've actually called him last earlier this week to talk about a deed because I had some questions. So. We do, we, we, we chat with them some, so. Um, the other thing they changed is the official zoning map, rather than being a paper copy is now a digital copy, so. Is that online now? It's GIS, right? It's the map that everyone uses anyways to look at zoning. So that's the official, we still have a paper map, it's still in my office and we'll keep it, but that's kind of some of the major changes that happened last this week and what's proposed for next week. Um, we'll likely fill the assistant director role here in the near future. And then um, hopefully the empty planner position for Chad. So, um, so kind of I'll, I'll update you guys next month as those positions hopefully get filled. So, yeah, that planner position sat open for like three weeks, and then I all of a sudden I got five applicants, three of which were really good, um, two of which were awesome. One, yeah. So we'll see we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah. We're doing really well. The, the department's going well. Um, it really hasn't slowed down too much. We've got a lot of administrative files, so not a lot of hearing files. I don't know if we have anything scheduled with you guys for next month. Jen is unaware. Uh, so we'll let you know. I don't think there's anything. There'll probably just be one meeting next month because uh, the second meeting would be close to Christmas anyways. And Oh, right. We have two meetings next month. So she knew somebody. She had a conflict of interest with a variance file. So that'll come to you guys. So. 
little change of pace from the zone changes you've been seeing. Um, I think that's all I got. Any questions for me? How many has she been processing? Like, Everything you don't, right? Like, like so, numbers. Uh, like There's been uh, a number 10, of CUPs 20. that she's okay. approved uh, or reviewed and approved. There's been a couple of variances. So has she denied much? Not, not, not yet. Okay, so. I just wonder. <laughs> She's had eight. There you go. So we'll probably see it before that happens, right? Or what what's you, that? Uh, She's leaning towards denial or something. Mm -hmm. no, so she, she could make a recommendation for you guys to review it. Like I recommend yeah. denial, um, or I recommend the zoning to the zoning county commissioner or to the the zoning commission that they deny this project, but then uphold another one. Or she could just deny it on the spot, and then it gets appealed to the board. So when she hears something at that at that level, and let's just say for grins and giggles here, she wants to go ahead and recommend denial or approval and send it to the zoning commission. Mm -hmm. Is that a continuation of that file, or do you have to re reschedule that for? We have to we have to re notice post. it. Just like just like when you guys do a recommendation to the board, yeah. we re notice it. We don't have to go back out for agency review. It's so three hundred feet. Yeah, yeah. So just the neighbors get noticed again, saying, "Hey, there's another hearing." This time it's between you know before this body. So. I don't know if she'll. She's been pretty confident. She's been pulling stuff out of the comp plan and saying, "Hey, the comp plan supports this project, and here's how." So she's she's doing her job really well. Um, she's got good experience to rely on too. So um, she understands code and she asks questions when she doesn't. So. Um, but yeah, you'll see the conflict of interest file. That's when she notified us like last minute, like, oh, I just reviewed this. And I think it was her son works for the company or something. It's like, oh, well, yeah, it's fairly clear. So, yep. Can we, um, can we talk about our last file for a minute, the zone change that, that I feel like got approved through a, through a loophole? <laughs> I didn't agree with that, and you know, I don't know if there's, you know, if we want to discuss it or anything, but it just seems like that ought to be if that if that is a loophole that the, the commission hasn't, you know, hasn't approved a different look at the soils. Let's why can't they fix that so we don't have that again? I, I part, part, felt like that was in part of that with that it's it's farmland and statewide enforcement. Yeah. That cannot be adopted by the county. That can only that's set down by USDA and NRCS. That can only be adopted by the state. And it actually goes so far as to say that it can only be adopted by the I don't by for us, the Secretary of State of Agriculture in the state of Michigan or higher authority. So I, after that file, I made a public records request for I go to the agriculture. And it took them three or four weeks and, and several emails back and forth. And they said, Well, what are you talking about? I have never even heard that term before. But I've asked around the office down here in Boise, we've never even heard that term before. And I, and I laid it out and I showed them NRCS, I showed them USDA, I showed them everything what's supposed to have happened. And said, here it is right here. It has to be approved by Idaho State Secretary of Agriculture or higher office. I said, we've never done it. So it's something that the county cannot adopt. It has to come from Boise. So we, in order to go ahead and implement that and deny someone because someone says it's farmland of statewide importance, Maybe an error. I don't know if it's a loophole as much as it's like lack of process being a, a followed by the state to adopt something from USDS. We're, we're yeah, it is. I mean, it is a lack of, of process, yeah. but it, it was it was a loophole that you discovered and and we and made a decision on a file. I think unfairly. Yeah. So the the planning commission is working on component reviews and updates. That information has been given to staff and to legal counsel to vet. And if that's once we get done vetting that information, we'll present that to the planning commission to, for their analysis, right? Um, we'll keep working with the state counterparts and see if they're going to adopt something and change it. But otherwise, that farmland of statewide importance, yeah, it looks like it's essentially yeah, there's not a whole lot to it. Right. And, and not only that, it, this is going to really break down. If you open our comprehensive plan and our land use section, it gives the soils and it gives us, I think it's nine soils that are considered prime farmland and roughly 30 that are non prime farmland. There's a little caveat in there on those prime farmland by NRCS and USDA. If they've been irrigated, yeah, irrigated. irrigated. So then I've done some more digging. That kind of makes sense. 
done a little more digging, you go back to USDA and NRCS to say, well, what's their definition of irrigated? Right. It's irrigated at, at least two of the prior four years. Mm -hmm. This piece of property here tonight, you know, prime egg, unless it's been irrigated at least two or more years in the last four, is not prime. It's class four split. It's not prime. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Who, who's the woman that, that Chad? Um, her, her name is Allison from NRCS. And it's very interesting because about the day or two after I got this, this public records request back from Idaho Department of Agriculture, Don stopped by my office because Don and I have been discussing this for literally years. And, and, I, and, and he came in and said, just got back from talking with Allison for a while in NRCS and and uh because I had forwarded them all my information and so he went down and showed her they believe what had happened was NRCS for state of Idaho had gone ahead and identified what they would consider farm on state wide importance. They send that out to agency review. Idaho Department of Agriculture okay. never adopted it. They never commented. So NRCS took that as oh well they're okay with it. But USDA is very clear. It has to be, has to be adopted, delineated. Uh, the criteria and definitions have to be adopted by the Idaho State Department of Agriculture. Right. Well, he even said, I don't even know if, if Idaho State statutes allow us to do this, which would mean it, it can take place at a higher office. That would have to be legislated. Right. Yeah, right up the flag. And it might. Someday it might, yeah. but as it sits right now. So it's a loophole. Right. Right. They're eggs heavy. They can have material. Oh, here. And they have a lot of egg I mean, irrigation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's unbelievable. Battle around. Oh, so, yeah. That'll be interesting. I, I feel I did my part, handed it over to you guys and Bill. A lot of information to dig through. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I yes. couldn't vote a yay on that one. I just, yeah. I, I wouldn't expect hey, a vote. I feel right about it. I thought when we came up on the loophole. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like that. I, I think a board that doesn't agree every time is a good board, right? Yeah. That's the democratic process. You guys aren't here to come to an agreement on each one. You're here to deliberate and then come to a, not a unanimous, but a majority vote, right? And that's, yeah, I think that's good. Because everyone comes with different perspectives and backgrounds and your interpretation of things, so. I think it's good. Yeah. I mean, you should sit in a place. I mean, it's difficult right? sometimes <laughs> you know, when, you, when you have the whole crowd, you know. <laughs> See, they're all going to hate us. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, you know, and I don't disagree with them, you know, but, but I think they're misinformed. I know. You know, the traffic, the gas station is not going to make more traffic, you know, but in so many times, bright lights, maybe. Yeah. Um, in so many times, what they're here for should be at the planning commission, you know, should have been done years ago if they didn't want these things to be right. able to happen. Or, or, you know, a lot of times it's it's more of an emotional side than anything factual. And I get it. Nobody was like, I don't want to, re I don't want this near me. Yeah. It's like, well, that's part of the, you know, legal uses or some of their opportunities to ask to do in this area, right? And, and, and it's not like, you know, a gas station is going to ruin the world. There's gas stations all over America, and there's this big <laughs> corp or a big organization, the government, uh, you know, DEQ and other places sure. that make sure they're going to be safe. I appreciate their concern. Yeah. Yeah. I like that the end, you know, you had some of these neighbors hugging the applicant, oh. letting them know that they're not hating. All right. You know, so to me, that's good. I, we met with the president of the president of the HOA, members of the HOA. Yeah. Um, and we told them polite opposition is always encouraged. Yeah. Right. That's fine. Just if you're not coming in here yelling and throwing cabbage, right? We're fine. So 
you know, hug it out at the end and we can agree to disagree. Reasonable minds can disagree, right? Um, but polite opposition is always great. It's the other way around when it's you know, the name calling and the, the crap and all that. That's, we, we can stay professional. Right. I've heard that one. Yeah, and you oh, never Jake, know. If, chase him out of here. If, get him, Jake. Yeah, you got five hundred dollars. You're so open yourself up. Yeah, I thought you had litigation before. <laughs> it's like, it's like it's not funny. I asked for my salary to be doubled, and they rejected it. So <laughs> you can take two sandwiches home if you want. <laughs> really harsh on this file is that it did not have to meet the comprehensive plan, and I've been doing a lot of digging on that too. Comp plan map. Comp plan map. Map designation. Like that's what I apologize. Uh, I've been doing a lot of reading in the Idaho land use manual, that 600 and some pages worth, and it goes into pretty great detail in there that, yeah, it does not have to match the land use designation, so long as it is in accord with the goals and policies of the comprehensive plan. And just like our housing bonus says, we're supposed to miss conditions. When I met with the. Yeah, it, it never says map, it says the policies. If you look in what, 67. And the policy to talk about that. Look, maybe the goals inform the policies and the policies are what are exactly. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I, it is an easier yes from your point of view if it, the, the underlying map's already sure. been changed, right? Oh, it, it's in direct conformance. There's no evaluation of the comp plan at that point, right? Because it matches. So that, that's why I wanted you to deliberate on that a little bit and like, okay, does it meet these criteria that as you see it? And that's really for if this goes to judicial yep. review, we can transcript <laughs> it and we say, hey, they did discuss that and they did say this is why they feel this way, right? So that's like I said, it's padding the transcript a little bit, but that's it's kind of to help. Well, yeah, padding the transcript, being transparent. Like mm -hmm. as we teach, as we do more of these, it becomes easier and easier to just kind of like read each other's minds. Like, yeah, we know that's what's going on. But like, I, I, one of the things that Luke commented or asked the question tonight was was spot on. Just to solicit a simple response to, to a question on the record, right? And that's as much for judicial review as it is for. Dozens of people that came to this meeting tonight because they care about their community. I get it, and I'm going to do the best that I can, and they're going to do the best that they can. But if we can continue to work on that kind of back and forth and not lose our grip on it because it's important. Um, I think also, like, trying really hard not to use jargon. Like, I'm starting to fall into it now all the time where there's just more and more jargon that I've accumulated. Mm -hmm. And even when I ask for, can you say that again with shorter words? Jargon, 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 right? Uh, condition, conditional use. That's a conditional term. Okay. What does that even mean? What you just, you know, when you, when you say, yeah, you, you can totally do that, but it requires it. It's, it's a permit with conditions. What the public hears is that's allowed. And I don't want it, right? Um, so I, 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 I hope that we can keep on working on that because it's going to improve ourselves as people as well. Like to be able to explain something to a five-year-old or golden retriever is a super valuable skill. I use it at work all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it helps me. Yeah. Yeah. And and I don't want to hide behind anything. And I'm, and then the public needs to as much as possible see that in me. And I'm that's why I apologize immediately tonight when I found out that I had been, you know, that that comment was about me. It was like, oh, solve it right now. Yeah. Move on, right? I think that's what Mr. Bowman was saying. He said something. I, I had a hard time hearing exactly yeah, what he was yeah, saying. Yeah, he had a bad connection. Yeah, he needs to get Starlink. But um, so I, yeah, I think that's what he was talking about, and I don't think he caught the gist of that—that that it was a, a, a joke. Probably because of the bad connection. Probably. Yeah, if you're in the room, you can read the person a lot better than some of it, so, so I can adjust my. But I actually I, appreciate. It. I can be funny, but I can just again, like, just be more explicit in what I'm saying here. <laughs> right instead of just now oh, give me 500 bucks and i'll do anything off we go <laughs> right but it has to be in bitcoin <laughs> right. on the dark web <laughs> the dark web okay. unmarked all right not sequential so we'll, we'll have one file for you guys in november 3rd november 3rd um, it hasn't been as controversial um yet so <laughs> put a little disclaimer on it you never know. After tonight, uh, yeah, people will be showing so, up. Five hundred dollars bills. <laughs>